Nation Football Championships. We've got an outstanding game coming up for you. The Class 5A Championship game between Charles Henderson, authoring one of the greatest turnarounds we've ever seen in high school football in this state, and the Ramsey Rams, who came back from the dead after a long absence not playing football at that school in Birmingham, and they won a state championship in 2016, and they're going to try to get another one tonight. Coach Bill Clark is with us. I'm Kevin Skarbinski. Coach, tell us uh, a couple of keys to this game for these teams. Well, you know, Ramsey, let's just talk about them. Obviously, I'm very familiar with them. Those guys, we had a lot of those guys on our on our team, you know, off that state championship team. Very athletic, fast. You know, they always have great athletes, play good defense. Um, so, I'm, you know, and they're explosive. So, excited to watch them. Uh, you know, and I think the story with Charles Henderson, obviously, what a great turnaround. You know, to, to only win two the year before and then be in the state championship game. So, Sounds like they got some good young players coming up. Uh, Going to be a great matchup, but I'm I'm excited to watch this one. Yeah, from two and eight to twelve and one to Jordan Hare Stadium, where in just a little while they will take on the Ramsey Rams for the five A state championship game. When we come back, we will hear from the head coaches from Ramsey and Charles Henderson. Stay with us. is a protector. Is it always a hero, bigger than life? Look and you'll find protectors all around us. At Protective, it's at the heart of who we are. For more than a century, millions have relied on us to make retirement more about wishes than worry and life insurance more about legacy than loss. We're by your side, helping you protect what matters most because we're all protectors. As a paramedic, you wouldn't believe the things that we've seen. I've seen all types of horrible things. I mean, we're there basically picking up the pieces from your worst day. Everyone is just driving and not paying attention. We all have the same goal. All of us want to go home alive and safe and harm nobody else in the process. Slow down. Be careful. Care about the other people on the road. Don't be the reason that someone else doesn't go home tonight. Are you an enthusiastic sports fan? Want to have fun and get in on the action? Heck yes, that'd be awesome. Have great attention to detail? Want to stay active? Definitely. Want to give back to the student athletes in your community? Obviously, yes. Then you'd make an excellent high school sports official. We need more officials in Alabama because with no high school officials, there are no high school sports. Sign up today at highschoolofficials.com. Welcome back to the Amherst Pre-Game Show. Welcome back to the Amherst Pre-Game Show, the 5A State Championship game. Let's meet the head coaches. I had a chance to catch up with Ramsey Rams head coach, Ronnie Jackson. And we're here with Coach Ronnie Jackson from the Ramsey Rams as we get ready for the Class 5A State Championship game. And Coach, first of all, congratulations for getting to this yeah. championship game. Uh, you personally have had quite a journey yes, to sir. get here. You've been a part of Ramsey football for a long time. You were part of the 2016 state championship mm -hmm. game. But now you're the head coach. Yes, and sir. What does it mean to you to have uh, guided this group of young men back here? Man, I can say God is good. Um, from the beginning, um, showing up at Ramsey High School, came from Parker High School, and uh, Coach Nelson uh, wanted me to, you know, take this journey with him, and uh, I did not want to come, to be honest. Uh, they were starting a new program, and I'm like, I just didn't want to start right now because I just left Parker. But <clears throat> to see where we are right now, uh, the 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 community support, uh, the administration, um, just everything about Ramsey, I absolutely love, and just to see where we've come from to where we are right now, it just means a lot to me and uh, our whole entire uh, city. When Coach Nelson moved on yes, sir. and you had the opportunity to be, I guess, first interim head coach uh -huh. mm -hmm. and then to earn the job, yes, sir. Uh, what did it mean to you that they put that faith and trust in you to yeah. lead these young men? Uh, it, it starts with our principal. Uh, my principal, believe it or not, she was my elementary principal uh, two years prior. 
And so uh, by her giving me that opportunity, she became the new principal at Ramsey, and uh, I was able to finally get at Ramsey. I was leaving my elementary school every day. So now I'm at the school. She trusted me. Uh, the administration's been awesome. The teachers have been awesome. So they just they believed in me, and um, I, I can't let her down. And it's always special, obviously, to get to a state championship game, but mm -hmm. when you go through your rival, yes, sir. Uh, it makes it a little more special. How, yes, how, how big was it to take yeah. You got Pleasant Grove twice this year, yes, not just in the yes, semifinals. Yes, yes, um, LeBeau. Shout out to Coach LeBeau. Um, what he's done these couple of years, these past years, he's been awesome. Um, we, know, we know them, they know us. And so to see the team that you have to get through every year, uh, we play them in the area, and a lot of times we come out on top during the area, but then we get to the playoffs, and, and for whatever reasons, we can never get over that hump. So to finally get over that hump, it just means it's a, it's a weight off of us because uh, we've been trying to get there, but they have been really good. They've been on top, and, and they deserved it, so um, it felt really good. Yeah, you snapped a three-year streak of getting to, yes, the, sir. Getting yes, to the state sir. championship game, so again, that makes it a little extra special. Let's talk about some of your players, some mm -hmm. of your leaders. Uh, QB Reese oh, does well. not play QB, no sir. but he's kind of the QB of your defense. How, how yeah. important is he to making the defense? I, I, I tell everybody, QB brings so much energy. He's that player where you just want to coach him. Like, he's that guy. And so at practice, like, if you come to our practice, you would think it's a full-out game. You would think he's playing the game. He does not take any reps off. He brings energy. He's excited. And so our guys feed off of that. And so it, it's a reason why um, our defense has scored uh, 11 out of the 12, 13 games we've played this year. So that, and it all starts with him. That's pretty extraordinary. <clears throat> yes, sir. To have yes, that sir. kind of uh, success rate, score, not just stopping the other right, team, but, but scoring, scoring. Yes, sir. with your defense. And, and you needed that against yes, Pleasure Grove. You were down 13-0, yes, and QB Correct. stepped and he up. he stepped up again. Uh, with a pick again, six, right? It's like, it's like I, I, can't, I tell him this all the time. Like, I, I expect that. Like, and, and so I just knew something was going to happen. Uh, he always finds a way, and he just has the it factor. So every time it's the chips are down, um, I just lean on them, and, and the whole team leans on the um, QB during that time. And so we're excited. I'm, I'm blessed to have a guy like that. You also got a big performance from your junior running back, Ashton Ashford. Yes, yes, yes. How much has he stepped up for you this year? Oh, season? Ashton, um, I couldn't be more proud of that guy. Um, Ashton um, had a rough start in the beginning, uh, just trying to make sure he's in the weight room, and he would kind of dodge a little bit. And I told him I saw something in him. I just knew that he has that it factor also. He just had to put the work with it. And to see where he's come from to where he is right now, again, I, I'm so proud of him, man. And the last couple of games, I want to say 200 yards per game. So he's been balling. So I'm excited for him also. Well, we know the whole Ramsey community will be excited as we get ready for the Class 5A state championship <clears throat> game. That's Coach <clears throat> Ronnie Jackson. Hi, I'm Lionel Richie, and I have traveled all over the world, but I consider Tuskegee, Alabama as my home sweet home. I have such a pride in this state, and I know that there's something I need to tell you that's of great importance. Vote. Register to vote and get your voter ID today. It really is easy. Easy like Sunday. Hi, I'm Mike McKenzie, Programming Director for Alabama Public Television. Several generous sponsors stepped forward to help make APT's statewide broadcast of the Alabama Super 7 Championships possible. Now I'd like to ask for your financial support as well. Call 1-800-239-4000 or give online at aptv.org to help us bring you even more special programming in 2023, including the state basketball championships in February and March. Thank you.
You're watching Alabama Public Television. Broaden your horizons. You can rely on APT for high school football. Join us live for the Alabama High School Super 7 Championships presented by Protective. Tune in November 30th through December 2nd to join the squad. Welcome back to the Amherst pregame show. Now as we're getting ready for Charles Henderson against Ramsey, let's meet the Charles Henderson head coach, Quinn Hambright. We're here with Coach Quinn Hambright from the Charles Henderson Trojans getting ready for the Class 5A championship game against the Ramsey Rams. Coach, congratulations on Thank getting you. to this point. I appreciate uh, it. This is not uh, familiar territory for Charles Henderson. What does it mean for you personally, the school, the community of Troy, to be in this moment? Well, um, I'm excited for the community. You know, they, they've yearned for an opportunity to, to cheer on their program again. You know, they're a few years removed, um, about nine years removed from being in the state championship, being in the situation. So um, my, my objective was to try to get us back into this situation. And, um, and the kids have done an exceptional job, man. They, they bought into the program. They bought into my vision. Um, the coaches have bought in. And, you know, they, they're playing likes out right now. You're, you've had obviously a great season at 12 and one, but people may not know or appreciate that last year you were two and eight. Yes. How do you turn two and eight into 12 and one? Um, last year, um, and I tell people this all the time, um, we had a, a team that um, ninth and tenth grade that had to play. They were a year away from being varsity starters. So that full year of experience before they were actually supposed to be starters helped us. <laughs> Um, you know, a lot of those kids, when I got there, they transferred out of there before I made it. Um, and, um, but um, luckily, you know, my guys stayed. Um, I got all of my ninth graders, got all of my eighth graders that came. And, you know, this is a special group. You know, it was, it was the weight room that, that sparked our momentum. You know, we were weak. <laughs> Listen to me, we were weak. <laughs> but, um, but now we're, we're a relatively strong team. And, um, and that mentality in that weight room kind of changed the mentality of this program. One of those special players, Jaiwan Boyd, yes. he does everything, I think, except drive the team bus. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he had a huge game in the semifinal victory, over 300 all-purpose yards. Mm -hmm. Just tell us about him as a player and as a teammate and as a leader. Well, Jaiwan Boyd is a, um, has a tremendous personality. Um, he's going to make sure everybody around him is smiling. Um, but on the football field, he is um, as mean as a pit bull. Um, he can make every single throw. He can make every single catch. He can cover anybody. He can make every tackle. Um, he's just that type of athlete. And, um, and I just can't be more proud of the progress that he has shown. Even as a sophomore last year, he made some tremendous plays last year. And, and um, last night's game was nothing short of amazing for him. He made some catches, just some highlight reel, yeah. Sports Center top ten play yes. Yes, type catches. Has that become something now you just expect out of him because you've seen it so often? Yes, definitely. Um, even in practice, um, he, he casually catches one-hand balls in practice. I mean, it, it's one of those things. Like, I want two hands. He said, Coach, my one equals two. You know, it's, it's, <laughs> he's like, but he's, I mean, it's true. You know, but we, we try to get away from those bad habits. But if he can get one hand up there, you know, I, can st I still trust that he can make those plays. Who else, uh, along with Jaiwan, has to step up for you guys to, mm -hmm. to get, get it done against Ramsey in this championship game? Yeah, I'm um, a Parker Adams for sure, my quarterback. Um, he's been playing lights out, you know, um, throwing the ball, putting it where it needs to be. He had one interception last night, but, you know, on a late read. But, um, you know, he, he, he's a composed, even kill kid. You know, it didn't phase him. He continued to play the game, and, you know, that, that, that was – um, high on his part to not let that get to him in, in a semifinal game. You know, um, um, Zach Coleman offensively, man, he, he's our workhorse in the backfield. Um, I'm a running back. Um, defensively, of course, Damian Hart, you know, who's, who's literally the heart and anchor of the soul of the defense at, at linebacker. Um, Zion Grady, uh, who's, you know, a sophomore, you know, phenom. You know, he has 20 sacks, over 30 tackles for loss. You know, so he's a kid that, that has to step up um, if Ramsey decides to pass the ball, you know, we, we, we have to put pressure on the quarterback and, and he's one that can do it. 
Now, I, I read that you avoided the Gatorade bath yes, after definitely. the semifinal victory. Yes. <laughs> Why was that? Well, you know, it's, um, it's one of those things where, you know, you, you're, you're happy, but, you know, the job's not finished type deal. You know, I, 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 don't, I, don't want, I didn't want to celebrate too early, you know, um, I, and, and, and my biggest thing, too, you know, and, and it, was, it was a little chilly, too. That was a little motivation, too. <laughs> I hear you. Um, but, you know, um, I, and I had to show the kids I still had some wheels, but, you know, it's just one of those things where, you know, you, you kind of just want to, you want to be, a, uh, you don't want to be a prisoner of the moment, but you also don't want to ruin the moment as well. So it was one of those things where, you know, I was happy for the kids, but, you know, the job's, you know, just not finished right now. One game left, that Class 5A state championship game. That's Charles Henderson head coach Quinn Hambright. We focus so much on offensive players today, but there are two defensive stars in this game, Bill. For Charles Henderson, you heard Coach Hambright mention his sophomore sensation outside edge rusher Zion Grady. 20 sacks, over 30 tackles for loss. Rated as one of the top 10 players in the country, regardless of position in the class of 2025. And, you know, when you got a guy that can, can change a game, you know, whether it's a takeaway, a tackle for loss, rushing the passer, you know, that's a big deal. And you got to, you know, we got an up and coming superstar, sounds like. And then for Ramsey, it's their their middle linebacker, QB Reese, son of former Auburn defensive end, Quentin Reese. His numbers, 137 tackles, 21 tackles for loss, five sacks, three interceptions. There's nothing he doesn't do. And here we see again one of the special moments of playing in the Super 7, and that is the Tiger Walk, or in this case, the Ram Walk. Yeah, that's such a big deal. You got parents. I mean, that's the stuff they don't forget. You know, they get to, to come into the stadium. Uh, it's big time. It's first class. I love that, that, you know, that the HSA does that. But back to our, you know, our Ramsey linebacker. You can hear his coach talk about him. He is dominant. Uh, sounds like he can change a game. Had the big pick when they needed it. Uh, they've scored, what they said, 11 times on defense. That's unheard of. And that, that still blows my mind. Yeah. You know, we used to talk about that when, with Alabama. We, we call them knots, non-offensive touchdowns. Right. And, of course, special teams as well as defense. But to score in all but two games with your defense, that's almost unheard of. And you're a defensive guy. You, you emphasize that part of the game. I do. That's, you know, and that's one of the things we've always preached, find a way to score on defense, and they're doing it. So you can hear why he counts on his defense. So this should be – an explosive and exciting game. And some of the explosive plays may not be from the offense, but from those defenses. The Class 5A State Championship game coming at you next. Charles Henderson from Troy, Ramsey from Birmingham. We are excited about what's about to take place. Stay with us here on Alabama Public Television. Are you an enthusiastic sports fan? Want to have fun and get in on the action? Heck yes, that'd be awesome. Have great attention to detail? Want to stay active? Definitely. Want to give back to the student athletes in your community? Obviously, yes. Then you'd make an excellent high school sports official. We need more officials in Alabama. Because with no high school officials, there are no high school sports. Sign up today at highschoolofficials.com. Alabama Public Television's coverage of the Alabama Super 7 Championships is made possible by these generous sponsors. You can rely on APT for high school football. Join us live for the Alabama High School Super 7 Championships presented by Protective. Tune in November 30th through December 2nd to join the squad. You're watching Alabama Public Television. Broaden your horizons. Welcome to the Alabama High School Athletic Association's Football Championships. Congratulations to the 14 boys teams and the two girls flag football teams for making it to Auburn. I want to extend my best wishes to the cheerleaders, the bands, the schools, and the communities who are there to show their hometown spirit. 
You all have so much to be proud of. Win or lose, enjoy the games and celebrate your success. Congratulations again and best of luck to all of you. Welcome to the Alabama Public Television High School Football Championships presented by Protective, offering life insurance, retirement, and asset protection to help protect what matters most. It's time now for the Class 5A Championship game between the Ramsey Rams and the Charles Henderson Trojans under the lights tonight from Jordan-Hare Stadium in Auburn, Alabama. And good evening, everyone. Mickey Shandricks along with Coach Rick Rhodes, and thanks for tuning in this evening to the 5A championship game. And, Coach, when you look at Class 5A, Ramsey always seems to be in the conversation. They're here. Meanwhile, Charles Henderson, they had a rough year last year. I don't think many people expected them or picked them to get to this game. So quite an interesting matchup tonight. Yeah, it really is, Mickey. I mean, Cinderella has come to the dance, you know, <laughs> in doing the research to, to, to get ready for this, this tournament. One of the things that I noticed about Charles Henderson, they said expected to compete for a playoff spot. Well, they've, they've definitely done that. Let's take a look at impact players for tonight's 5A championship matchup. Well, first of all, for Ramsey, Ashton Ashford, the uh, the very, very good uh, junior running back, 203 yards in the semifinals last week. You see his numbers for the season. He's an exceptional, uh, exceptional player. Joan Boyd, the uh, wide receiver, had, really does everything for Charles Henderson. Uh, in the semifinals, he had a rushing TD, a TD reception, and a defensive touchdown on an interception for the season. You can see he averages 20 yards a catch, 6.9 a rush. He has five interceptions on defense. Our impact players presented by the Coach Safely Foundation. Win without losses. When we return to Auburn, we will take a look at keys to tonight's 5A state championship game as we continue live from Jordan Air Stadium. Are you an enthusiastic sports fan? Want to have fun and get in on the action? Heck yes, that'd be awesome. Have great attention to detail? Want to stay active? Definitely. Want to give back to the student athletes in your community? Obviously, yes. Then you'd make an excellent high school sports official. We need more officials in Alabama because with no high school officials, there are no high school sports. Sign up today at highschoolofficials.com. 79 Throughout my career, I've seen many crashes, and a lot of the fatalities are from people who haven't worn their seatbelt. Cars have rolled over multiple times. I've had people end up in lakes, um, ravines. I've been looking for people in the woods for a couple hours before. Usually just about every bone in their body is broken, their organs have ruptured, and typically they die. You want to save a life, just simply click a button and put the seatbelt on. Seatbelts really do save lives. A game without a crowd is just a scrimmage. A performance without an audience is just a rehearsal. Without your presence, high school sports and the performing arts aren't possible. Ensure that these essential extracurricular activities continue to enrich the lives of students in Alabama. Purchase a ticket to your local high school's game or performance. This message presented by the AHSAA. And welcome back to Jordan-Hare Stadium. It is prime time at the Super 7, and it is getting close to time to kick off the 5A state championship game between Ramsey and Charles Henderson. It is now time for us to break down the matchup. Nobody better to do it than Coach Rick Rhodes. What are our keys to the game? Well, first of all, uh, for, for Ramsey, uh, their defense has to contain Boyd, and they better be careful because Charles Henderson has four receivers this year with touchdown catch, catches over 58 yards. Second thing they got to do, they got to take care of the football, something that has been a little bit of a problem, problem at times. For Charles Henderson, that offensive balance. Uh, if, if, if they can uh, double cover Boyd again, they've got to be able to spread the wealth. Uh, that's going to be a real key. And that defensive line, which has been very, very much a part of this playoff run, will be tested by a very, very good Ramsey offensive line. Well, the table is set, and the Eagle has landed at Jordan-Hare Stadium. We've got the kickoff to the 5A state championship game coming up next here from Jordan-Hare Stadium. You're watching Alabama Public Television. Broaden your horizons.
Hi, I'm Lionel Richie. And I have traveled all over the world, but I consider Tuskegee, Alabama as my home sweet home. I have such a pride in this state and I know that there's something I need to tell you that's of great importance. Vote. Register to vote and get your voter ID today. It really is easy. Easy like Sunday. And a nice look at the crowd in attendance tonight for the 5A state championship game at Jordan-Hare Stadium. The captains for both the Ramsey Rams and the Charles Henderson Trojans down at the 50-yard line getting set for the coin toss. As the 5A pregame festivities continue down on the field. And this is our final order of business before we get to the kickoff. It is a chilly night tonight in Auburn. A little bit of a breeze inside the stadium. All right, guys, hey, congratulations on being chosen the captain of your team. That tells us as officials you guys are leaders, okay? Part of being a leader is helping us out with sportsmanship. Guys, we're going to have to have it, okay? Nothing wrong with a hard football play. Nothing wrong with helping that young man up. Does everybody agree? Perfect. Rams is our visiting team. they got a choice of a coin toss. Gentlemen, here's a silver dollar here. There's tails. And there's heads. What are you going to call, young man? Loud enough for Mr. Bowman can hear it. Our tails. Our tails, guys. I have to drop it, flip it over my head where we flip. I've got heads. You've won the toss. You know what your coach wanted you to do? Hey, everybody, hang tight. Charles Henderson has won the toss. They've elected to defer to the second half. This time you want the football, right, young man? And you guys, coach told me you want to defend this jumbo tron. Is that correct? All right, keep this one. You want to defend the Jumbotron? You want to defend that? All right, so I want you guys to step over here. You guys over here. Rams will be receiving on this side of the field. All right? Everybody and let's hands. welcome in the game. third member of our broadcast crew tonight, Susan Carruthers down on the field. Hey, guys. Well, has Pat Dye Field seen some action over the past 24 hours or what? But it is chilly down here. But, of course, that's not affecting these players and these fans. They are fired up and ready to go. Listen, I talked to both coaches before the game, and this is what they had to say. Coach Ronnie Jackson of the Ramsey Rams. I asked him, what do you have to do to win this game? And he said, we have to play Ramsey football. And I said, well, what does that mean? He said, we hang our hats on our defense. Our defense sets the tone. If they come out, lights out, we're going to have a great game. And then Coach Quinn Hambright of the Charles Henderson Trojans, he said they've got to execute across the ball, and they've just got to play hard-nosed football. It's going to be a great day, game tonight, guys. Thanks a lot, Susan. Charles Henderson comes in at 12-1. and The only blemish on their season was a 26-24 loss to Beauregard back in September. Meanwhile, Ramsey comes in at 12-2. Their only losses to 6A Parker, 7A Auburn. Both were region champs. Charles Henderson out of Region 2. Ramsey out of Region 5. Well, those are really impressive uh, records. Even the losses are impressive because they lost to very good football teams. And there's a lot of firepower on these teams and some big, strong youngins up front. It's, it's going to be another great football game. And a good look at Nicholas Pearson. Had a 40-yard field goal last week against Faith Academy. Still got some win tonight, but nothing like, uh, nothing like last night. We get set for kickoff. It's 46 degrees this evening in Auburn. Doesn't sound real cold, but with a little breeze, it is definitely chilly, as well, Susan said. I, I have no interest in that, Mickey. I don't know what the temperature is in this booth, which feels to me like it's about 15 degrees. And it's time now for the Department of Human Resources kickoff, changing lives throughout Alabama, and we are off and away with the 5A state championship game. This kick sails into the end zone, so... Ramsey will come out first and 10 at their 20. And Ramsey led by quarterback Keenan Cameron. You know, the, if you follow Ramsey football this season, you know they've got a couple of guys they use at this position. Kenyon gets the start tonight, but also Tramel Washington will yeah. play some at quarterback. Yeah, his numbers are impressive. He's thrown for 1,744 yards, 17 TDs. And the first play of the game, it's a completed pass out on the edge. Jalen Jones, the leading receiver for Ramsey, making the catch. And here's a look at the Ramsey starting offense. And, Coach, this, this Ramsey 
offensive team has put up the most points in school history this season. They can really stretch the field and hurt you in a lot of ways. They have a lot of speed, a big, strong offensive line. Now they got to keep an eye on this Tramel Washington. Second down. They go to the running game. And this is very close to first down yardage for Ashton Ashford as we take a look at the Charles Henderson defense. And Coach Hambright made it clear that his defensive unit is going to have to really contain the edges tonight and also cover the entire field with the speed that Ramsey has on offense. And here is a first down carry for Ashford. So three plays and the Ramsey Rams move the chains. Pretty good surge by that Ramsey offensive line. And that matchup all, offensive line, defensive line is such a key and, and Ramsey is winning the early going. Here. First and 10. And the spin up the middle is a nice pickup on first down for Ashford. Yeah, good tough running. I mean, you know, that's the second time he's gotten significant yardage after contact. Second down and five. Second down five. And the handoff. This time, Ashford is wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah, Tackle for loss that time for Charles Henderson. Yeah, nothing going there in a power play and uh, very well defended. Got underneath the block and then made the t made the tackle on top of that. So here's our first critical third down. Third down and four. Keenan with a little fake over the middle he goes. Pass is complete to Christian Stinson and it will be a Ramsey first down at the Charles Henderson 36 yard line. Yeah, it's a slant route by the slot receiver right there. Beautifully thrown ball, I mean, right in that front armpit. That exactly where you want to stick that throw. Great throw. So a good start offensively as the Rams have marched this thing from their 20 down to the Charles Henderson 37 yard line. Screen pass and good yardage after the catch. On the opposite side of the field by Jalen Jones. That is his second grab of the game, and it'll make it second down and seven. A real good hustling play by Quay Scott, number zero for the for the Trojans. I thought he was going to make the play for no game, but uh, again, good tough running after contact. Picked up a couple. Second down and seven. Football spotted at the Charles Henderson 33-yard line. and sends it back in motion. Looks, throws over the middle. Pass is complete. That's Stinson again, his second grab of the game. And as happened the first time he caught the football, it results in a Ramsey first down inside the 20. Yeah, ran the slant route again. You can see the first window is closed. Very patient right there. Gets to that second window between the two linebackers. Good concentration and patience by both the receiver and, and uh, the quarterback the handoff to Ashford. Nice hole. He is upended by Charles Henderson's Mario Davenport, but it is another good running play on first down. It'll make it second and two. And you can see that big, that big strong offensive line again makes contact. A whistle before the snap. As Ramsey has invaded the Alabama votes red zone presented by the Alabama Secretary of State. Check the penalty flag. Illegal substitution on the defense. Five-yard penalty, half the distance to the goal. I don't know whether they played with 12 play second down. on that play or somebody got off the field late. So the penalty should result in a first and goal, and it will just outside the five-yard line. Ashford right up the middle. Boy, he is hit behind the line of scrimmage. 
That was great penetration that time by Charles Henderson's Zarian Mack. And Mack is a little bit different type of nose guard. Not, not the man mountain, but you see the quickness right there. Gets off that block by the center, and wraps around, and makes a nice play two yards deep in the, in the back. That's the first time we've seen some penetration by that Trojan defensive front. They give him a half yard of forward progress. Second down and goal from the five. Ashford. The flag comes in, and Ashford dives down inside the three. But again, laundry on the field. We'll have to check this penalty. As late as the flag was thrown, I'm thinking maybe it's an offensive penalty and maybe a procedure. Five men in the backfield. Yep. Gets the offense. Five yard penalty. We play second down. That's a big penalty. One, two, three, four, five. That's definitely five. Might go in Canada, but not here. <laughs> And it results in the five-yard penalty, and you hate to see penalties when you get that close to the goal line. Well, they, you know, in the red zone right here, I mean, you know, you got a second and goal from the five, and you're backed up. You're supposed to be backed up five. They ain't backed up yet. And they move it back another yard. Okay, now I think we got it straight. So after that, it's second and goal from the 10. Ashford gets the call. Huge opening over left tackle. Ashford's in for the Department of Human Resources touchdown. Changing lives throughout Alabama. And so Ramsey takes the opening kickoff. They march 80 yards. And Ashton F. Ashford scores the first points of the 5A state championship game. Well, well, I almost said that second and 10 is a, is a lot different than second and five, but as we're going to see on the replay after this PAT, they made it look easy. Nice job of blocking by that offensive line for Ramsey. Here's William Murray, the junior, on to attempt the extra point. Straight on kicker out of a hole from Tramiel Washington. And the kick just does creep over the crossbar and Murray is very happy about that 7-0 our score here as we get a look at the touchdown you can see I mean the, the cavern to run through he's cleaning the secondary and then uh, Ashford does a great job once he gets in the secondary of warding off that, that tackle from the safety look at him seal it down and lead through boy that's really nice You know, this Ramsey team, Coach, they come in very balanced. They average 369 yards of total offense a game, 195 of that through the air, 174 running the ball, and a big part of that is that young man, number two, Ashton Ashford. There you see the Aldot scoring recap. As we mentioned, they go 80 yards, taking the game's opening kickoff, and four and a half minutes later, they're into the end zone. Well, a very methodical drive. I mean, 11 plays, 80 yards. Uh, that's it's really the way you want to start start a football game. And uh, as we've seen in the other games, let's see if this holds true. The team that had that kind of drive to start the game ended up winning the football game. And here is William Murray. Teed up, ready to kick it away. Standing back deep is Terrence Thomas for Charles Henderson. The Department of Human Resources kickoff. Will be fielded from the 16-yard line by Thomas and Thomas starts out across the 30 and stopped at about the 36 and that is where the Trojans will set up shop first and 10 with their first look on offense as they are led out by quarterback Parker Adams who has had a fantastic season for the Trojans He's thrown for over 2400 yards 26 touchdowns this year 5'11", 170 pound junior. Has three rushing TDs to go along with that. So first and 10, Ramsey showing blitz right away and they back out of there. It's 
how they come after him. Passes downfield by Adams, and it's caught in stride by Jawan Boyd, and Boyd is in for the touchdown. Just like that. Well, that didn't take long. You know, we said Boyd was one of those kind of guys that could beat you a lot of different ways. That's a straight fly route. Uh, good pressure by Ramsey, but Adams stood in there and threw a strike. Well, Jawan Boyd. Pretty boring football game, huh? <laughs> he is a big time playmaker. These kids can play. 21st touchdown of the season for Mr. Boyd. Quite a start here to the 5A state championship game. Pearson's extra point is good. The electric co-ops of Alabama presenting our extra point and field goals, and now we've got a flag. I think it's sure. going to be against Ramsey, though. We've got to stop it to play. Prior to the snap. Well, this is a this is a beautiful uh, run route. You see how Boyd stacks the defender, gets right on top of him, where the defender cannot adjust. We have a penalty, and I think it's going to be the is going to be the no. I think it was a dead ball foul, so the kick is going to have to be redone. Pretty good throw by that young man too. So we will re-kick as. The penalty was against Ramsey. Good snap. And a perfect kick there from Nicholas Pearson. Ties the game. 7 7. One play scoring drive as Parker Adams and Jawan Boyd. They have been in quite a one two punch this entire season. And they show up early here on the first play from scrimmage. And there you see your one play scoring drive presented by Aldon. Yeah, one play 64 yards. But, uh, that about sums that up. I, I tell you, the route really was beautiful. They gave a little inside move to set up the corner and then busted right through the outside shoulder, stacked, got, got right on top of that receiver, and a beautifully thrown ball by Adams as well. And we got us a, do we have us a football game or a track meet? I don't know. We'll see. Fun way to start it, though. as though Boyd was in single coverage over there with the Ramsey defensive back. You may not see that again for a while. Uh, I wonder about yeah, that for yep, sure. Yeah. I really thought they would double him. But they probably will. We'll see how Ramsey will respond now. So Pearson has it teed up as we get set for the kickoff. Knuckleball that will hit at the 12-yard line and take a bounce. Right at he's the got arms he's got of hold. James Jones. For our correction, this is Jalen Jones, Look and he's out. across midfield. And a great return there for Jalen Jones. Boy, you can see that you can see that open up right down the middle. It's a really nice job of the uh, kickoff return unit of opening up that chasm in the middle. Well, it's right to the middle left of your screen. I think is where it'll be. Right there. See the, the kick in and kick out in the lead through shoot. It looked almost like a play from scrimmage. Really just well done. First down at the 30 yard line. The Ramsey offense comes back out on the field. Thank God we only got one TV timeout. And a little mix up between quarterback and running back. And Charles Henderson takes his advantage as Zion Grady, the, one of the top defenders on this Charles Henderson defense with the tackle for loss. Well, he's just a sophomore now, 6'4", 225. He's going to trail the puller right there. Nobody, nobody uh, blocked back on him. Uh, and that's a good look at a guy that has 36 tackles for loss for the year and 22 sacks. Just a sophomore. Second and 15. They go up top. And it is incomplete. Pass was intended for Tremel Washington. First time they have targeted him 
tonight, but he was very well covered. Well, a little difference in those two fade routes, the one that Charles Henderson run and, ran and the one that Ramsey just ran. You notice how the receiver was kind of pushed to the sideline, was not able to stack on top of that defender, uh, and, and, and the result is one was a touchdown and one was an incompletion. So third down and 15. Go to the running game. Here's Ashford. Nice opening. And he is spun to the turf at the 26 yard line by Charles Henderson's Damian Hart. That's going to set up a fourth down and six. It's about the third time they've run to that left side and really uh, have run through gaping holes. I, I don't know whether there's a uh, an alignment in the uh, Charles Henderson uh, front that they're taking advantage of. Uh, didn't look like there was an edge defender to that side. We'll keep an eye on that. As we look at this big fourth down, Bradley Stoves and Anthony Miles, the left guard and left tackle, doing a good job here early in this one. Fourth down and six. Over the middle they go, incomplete. It looked like they had a shot at the completion there as Jalen Jones was the intended receiver, but it's incomplete. Yeah, had Jones coming across on a, on a post route, very tight window. Take a break and return to Jordan Hare Stadium in just a moment. What is a protector? Is it always a hero? Bigger Maybe than life? Time out. Look and you'll find protectors all around us. At Protective, it's at the heart of who we are. For more than a century, millions have relied on us to make retirement more about wishes than worry and life insurance more about legacy than loss. We're by your side, helping you protect what matters most because we're all protectors. You can almost feel the shock waves from anti-aircraft fire and hear the roar of a P-51 Mustang. They were unwelcome, unappreciated, and underestimated. But in the end, their skills, not their skin color, validated their legendary status. This is Alabama, and when you're here, you can take it all in. Be a great coach. We need you. Our kids need you. Motivate them. Challenge them. Inspire them. Pay attention and know the facts. Every injured youth is a loss. So let this be our goal. Our collaborative goal. Our unified goal. Our name is our mission. Coach safely. It's the mission. It's the purpose. It's the law. Coach safely. Win without losses. And welcome back inside Jordan Hare Stadium. There you see our score in the 5A state championship game as we're under six minutes to play in the first quarter, tied at seven. A Ramsey drive a moment ago ended on a fourth down incomplete pass in the end zone. So Charles Henderson will come back out onto the field. First and 10, they have ran one play. And it was a 64 yard touchdown pass. An average of 64 yards of play is, I think, pretty good. <laughs> You'd take that as a coach any day. I think so. Do you ever have an offense that averaged 64 yards of play? Uh, no, <laughs> no, and neither, and neither has anybody else. So, <laughs> First and 10 for the Trojans. They still got Boyd at the bottom of the screen. I think safety has moved over a little bit, but it's still one-on-one -on -one bump and run coverage. And here's a running play for Charles Henderson. Pounding it out across the 30-yard line is Zachary Coleman, the six-foot, 215-pound running back who came into this game with 785 yards rushing on the season. Now, here's a little dynamic on this. At the snap, the safety to, to the side the run went to bailed to double cover Boyd number two. That's the safety that normally would be fitting up on that run, and instead of being second and four, it might be second and seven. 
Second down and five. Flag comes in before the snap. And looks like we're going to have a penalty against the Trojan offense. Prior to the snap. Snap infraction. On the offense, five-yard penalty. Replay second down. Well, they give up the five yards they gained on first down. Second and ten. Ah, those unforced errors. And coaches broadcasters. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> well, it's a point. Second down and ten. And here's the handoff. And on the carry that time was Boyd. Our correction, Antonio Frazier. Gain of one, so going to set up third ball. Real good pursuit and closing by QB Quentin Reese. Uh, he, tackles t he, he averages 10 and a half tackles a, a game, 21 tackles for loss. He's got five sacks in, on the year and three interceptions, so he is a force in that middle. So third down and nine. Everybody's got the play call. A little shift, and here goes the Wildcat. This is Boyd. And boy, you see the team speed there of Ramsey as it looked like that play might go for big yardage, but coming up to make the stop was Zedrick Powell. Yeah, really nice. Really nice open field tackle by, by Powell. It looked like this play was going to go as they shift into a, a Wildcat formation quarterback draw right there. It looked like he was going to run out of the back of the stadium, but you're going to see a big hit right there by the safety to that side. Very nice open field uh, by Powell. And that makes it fourth and three and brings out the punting unit for the Trojans. Kick is a good one. High. And another flag comes in. This will roll inside the 20, inside the 15, but we do have more laundry here at Pat Dye Field. Yeah, we had a, uh, a collision and a kind of a wrestling match here. Uh, I know at about the 40 yard line. I don't know whether this is going to be holding or a personal foul. Thrown pretty aggressively. A lot of times that's a, you know, if you get an overhand throwing it, it's a line drive. A lot of times that's a personal foul. I think you're going to see it at the bottom of the screen, kind of the, in the left right there. It's kind of a takedown. That might be a hold. <laughs> and the official still sorting it out. It is going to back the Rams up. Clearly a hold on the return blocker for Ramsey. And this is a costly penalty. You know, all that hidden yardage in the kicking game, and, and that includes the penalties right here, is, is so important in, in, a, in a football game. You know, one of the more inter interesting statistics in this game, if you catch every kick and eliminate penalties, it's like having a 1,000-yard rusher During on your football team. Holding on the receiving team. Half the distance to the goal, first down. So Ramsey will start backed up inside their 10-yard line on this drive, their third possession of the first quarter. with a look to the sideline. Fakes, throws, and it is incomplete. Jalen Jones, the intended receiver, pass a bit too behind him. Yeah, it looked like that, uh, that one end of the combination thought it was going to be a back shoulder throw, and the other end of the combination, Jalen Jones thought it was going to be a, a, a deeper route. I'm sure that he and Keenan will get on the same page. Second down for Ramsey. Keenan lobs it up down the near sideline. It is incomplete. It was intended for jo uh, Jones. Good coverage there by Sequan Fay. 
Well, this is really nice. Uh, in phase coverage is right on the inside hip where he wants to be and goes up to high point that ball. A nice defensive coverage right there by that young man. So third and ten. And here's the handoff to Ashford. Boy, hard running by Ashford as he runs over a Trojan defender at the 10 yard line. Mario Davenport. Rough end of that collision. It'll still be fourth down. I'll tell you, run over is the right term. I mean, he, he, he flattening. You know, Davenport's about 6'4", and, and uh, uh, the running back was about 5'9". The low pads are usually win, and that time he got underneath the big guy and, and got it done. Tough running by Ashford, but not enough for a first down. So here's Murray punting from his own goal line. A very short kick, kind of an end-over-end end kick, and it will be down at the 25-yard line. So, Coach, you talked about the hidden yardage in special teams, and that penalty against Ramsey is still being felt here in field position. You, you really do. And, and, you know, penalties in the kicking game are almost always devastating. Either you lose a huge game or you lose field position or you lose both. And they're just not worth it. And uh, you're better off to let the guy go by than to, than to commit the foul. So what about this field position for the Trojans? First down at the Ramsey 26. Well, obviously great field position. The key is can they take advantage of this? Here is the handoff to Coleman. Coleman is cut down just short of the 22-yard line. Give him four yards on the first down carry. Second down and six. And that's what's important in this in this red zone area. Not quite to the red zone yet, but close enough. You, you want to stay ahead of those sticks by down and distance. And four yards on first down is just what you're looking for. As we go under two minutes to play in the first quarter. Flag before the snap. Racking up the penalties here in the first quarter. Yeah, this must be another procedure, I would think. Or offside. Sideline warning. Or sideline warning. On the defense. They're first. And of course, this first sideline warning comes with no penalty yardage. Second down and six. And turning the corner is Coleman. And football came loose at the end of the play. But Coleman's on it, so it'll be a first down for the Trojans. And this one's coming back as well. See the running back turn the corner like that. You sometimes see holding on the edge. Well, he was not going to be able to get around that, that corner, but he was able to matriculate it and get it, and get the ball downhill for a nice game, but this is going to come back. Way back. During the run, holding on the offense, 10-yard penalty, replay, second down. That's a big penalty. Takes away a first down, makes it second down, and 18 back at the 34. Now he went from a great down and distance situation and great field position to something that's pretty tough to get. And here's the handoff to Coleman right up the middle. And he runs into Ramsey's DeMarcus win. So a short gain is going to make it third down and long now for Charles Henderson. A little bit surprised that they haven't gone back deep to Boyd, you know, with you know, such ease on that first score. And I know he's getting double covered right now, and it kind of gets into, into play what we talked about earlier. If they're going to, you know, put two men on one out here, it's going to leave some vacancies for some other players. Let's see if they can take advantage of that. They need to take it down to about the 16-yard line for a first down. Coleman Huge hole up the middle. He's upended at the 20, and he's going to be just shy of the first down, about two yards shy. 
That was a good-looking draw play. Sold very well by the quarterback. Offensive line does a nice job of pushing the defenders upfield and a good lead block inside. Thought for a minute it was going to pop all the way into the end zone, but nice recovery and a nice open field tackle uh, by a, another safety in the Ramsey defense. It'll set up fourth and three, and Charles Henderson will have the between-quarter timeout to discuss their options here. We're through one quarter in the 5A state championship game from Jordan Hare Stadium in Auburn, tied at seven. Change lives and achieve your professional goals with a rewarding career at the Alabama Department of Human Resources, the state's provider of social services in all 67 counties. Join our hardworking team that positively impacts the lives of children and families across Alabama. Speak to a recruiter by calling 334-242-1780 or emailing recruitment at dhr.alabama.gov. There's power in the simplest of actions, like one neighbor helping another, where everybody looks out for everybody else. Community is everything to the electric cooperatives of Alabama, and we're grateful for your trust to provide the energy you need, giving you the power to power on. Your Alabama Electric Cooperatives, empowering lives, empowering communities. A game without a crowd is just a scrimmage. A performance without an audience is just a rehearsal. Without your presence, high school sports and the performing arts aren't possible. Ensure that these essential extracurricular activities continue to enrich the lives of students in Alabama. Purchase a ticket to your local high school's game or performance. This message presented by the AHSAA. Hey, I'm Phil Hutchison, Interim Executive Director of Alabama Public Television. We're excited this year to join the Alabama High School Athletic Association and the NFHS Network to present live coverage of the Super 7 State High School Football Championships. This is something viewers have been asking for for years, and thanks to support from several generous sponsors, we're finally able to make it happen. For the first time, viewers everywhere in the state will have an opportunity to see these games. Now I'd like to ask for your support as well. Individual contributions make up a substantial portion of APT's programming budget. Your gift can help APT invest in more collaborations in the coming year, helping us bring other new programs to television and enabling us to create new educational opportunities. Call 1-800-239-4000 or give online at aptv.org. Thank you. Back at Jordan-Hare Stadium in Auburn, Super 7. Here on Alabama Public Television, what a first quarter it was in the 5A state championship game. There you see Ashton Ashford getting the scoring started with a short touchdown run. And then the first play from scrimmage for Charles Henderson. Parker Adams connecting with Jaiwan Board on the 64-yard touchdown. And we are tied at 7 as we begin the second quarter. Also joined by a couple of coaches, Rick Rhodes and now Jack Crow has joined us. I feel like I better get on my game with these two guys in the booth with me. And uh, Coach Crow, thanks for stopping in, sure. of course. Honored. Uh, we, we had the opportunity to speak with you earlier this morning in the 3A state championship game. You're the founder and chairman of Coach Safely Foundation. So we want to chat with you about that here sure. in the second quarter and yeah. also just reminisce a little bit with you as well as yeah. Charles Henderson goes for the field goal attempt to begin the second quarter. And it is good. So the Trojans take their first lead of the game as the field goal is good by Nicholas Pearson. So it's now... 10 to 7. Coach, let's let's start off with just tell us a little bit about the Coach Safely Foundation and, and what your mission is. Mission is uh, to preserve sports as a 
safe experience where parents, and I think particularly the game of football, where parents can feel like that injuries are being a, being recognized and prevented to the highest level they can. And we're we're targeting the 14 and under volunteer coaches that don't have the training that the Alabama High School and all high school coaches have, and they don't have athletic trainers. So pretty much the the responsibility of the well-being, they're on their own out there. And we're trying to make sure they have the knowledge. Uh, at CoachSafely.org, you can, any, any coach can go take the course, be certified. Uh, I promise you the people that are paying the insurance and the properties you're using would uh, feel like that, you know, it's uh, responsible behavior. Well, I know you're, you, it's really important to you to protect the, uh, the players who participate in this sport and also to protect the future of the sport with future participation. Absolutely. Uh, football's declining. Youth sports, in youth sports, football's declining 8% a year. And it's because parents have seen too much of the movie Concussions. And uh, I, I remember the last time I was in this stadium, it was LSU and Auburn, and a player laid on the ground out there on the opening kickoff probably for 30 minutes. And I think for every minute laid on the ground, there was probably 10, 20, I'm guessing. Parents, mamas, grandmamas said, I'm not going to let my son play that game. I'm not going to let my grand. And we got to do something to offset. There are risks, but they're risking anything in sports. And uh, so we just, you know, we got to work to mitigate the risk. It's safer now than it's ever been. Would, would you not? I mean, we, we've changed. Absolutely. Yeah. We've changed the game for the better. It's safer than it's ever been. But the, the safest thing is for a coach to have the ability to recognize prevent injuries. And one hour, no charge. State pays for it. This whole thing is a funded initiative by contributors in the state of Alabama. So we need to do it. All sports, all injuries. Yeah, yeah. It's so important to have qualified, trained people as the pooch kick work to perfection. Wow. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever seen it work I don't to that perfection I've like seen that. that before either. <laughs> now, it's going to be interesting now as to whether or not there was a, an eligible receiver in the area that has to have an opportunity to catch that. So we'll see. Wow. Oh, interference. And the boo birds out here for Charles Anderson. Now, you, you know, you see the perplexed look on the sideline because you say, well, on an onside kick, you see collisions all the time. Yeah. But the onside kick hits the ground. Yeah. And that, and that one was, was in the air and had not, had not been on the ground. Let's take another look at the, this was a re-kick, and here we go. Yeah, it's really, you know, usually you see a little spot, but you can see right there that well, that's an interesting call. It is an interesting call. I'm not saying it's a bad call now, Coach. I don't want to give any false impressions here, but interesting call, and, th and that's going to set up uh, Ramsey, you know, with the football and what could have been a turnover and with excellent field position. Wow. I'd still be asking questions. I think you understand this. I don't. Well, I, yeah, I'd be asking questions. It's not going to do any good. They're not going to change their mind, but I'd, but I'd be asking them. So. Yeah. So Ramsey will start this drive from inside Charles Henderson territory. First down at the 46. Here is Ashford. And Ashford with a nice pickup on first down, a gain of six to the 40-yard line. Yeah, and, and no edge defender. Again, you know, one of the things, the defensive principles, you want to have edge defenders, right. you know, to turn stuff back in. And yeah. to that left side, Charles Henderson has, has been very soft out there. You know, you got a outside shoulder responsibility on the short edge. Ashford, not much that time. But you also got a coach telling you not, not to let that guy get up on that linebacker. That's exactly so. right. <laughs> So it's sort of like you got two jobs and they don't exactly fit with each yeah. other. It doesn't make a difference, son. Make the tackle. You know, <laughs> <It that's... did. laughs> uh, Good penetration that time by the Charles Henderson front. Third down and three. Here's Ashford. Got wow. the first down and more inside the 30. And he'll be wrapped up from behind by Mario Davenport. But the Rams move the chains. Nice gain on third down. 
Yeah, Charles Henderson slanted their front that time, and they and and you're going to see right here. Watch the slant to the right of the screen, and boy, I tell you what, Ramsey picked it up, oh, and yeah. great vision right there by yeah. uh, by Ashford to pick up uh, that big first down. They go right back to Ashford on the first down carry. Runs into a a blue wall there. First man there, Jalen Jones on the tackle for Charles Henderson, along with help. It's still a good game. Second down and second down and five. Here is Ashford again. He's been a workhorse nice in this cut. first half. And he's going to be inside the 15 for another first down. I'll tell you what, now, that's, that's some good offensive line. You know, I live in the Ramsey district. Well, I wonder why I had on a blue sweatshirt. Hey, yeah, I'm a Ramsey Ram now. <laughs> and uh, so I, I see the lights on when they get there and have those early morning workouts. This, this bunch works at it now. Number two gets the call again. Inside the five, down to the two is Ashford. He's already up to 83 yards rushing here in this first half. Yeah, he's really had a great first half. Two great runs right there. Yeah. First, but the one before this, he kind of stretched it out and cut it right back inside. On this, on this run right here, he bounced it outside. Just great timing and vision on his part. And tempo, tempo here is Ramsey will punch it in. Oh, yeah. Right up the shoot. Guess who? Yeah. Second rushing touchdown of the game for number two, Ashton Ashford. They answered that field goal. They went, went right after the Charles Henderson sure defense did. with great success. Downhill. Yeah, Ashford's having a night. He's got 94 yards already. You know, he had 200, 203 yards last week in the semifinals. He's on his way to matching that. So Ramsey with the, the answer. They retake the lead and the electric co-ops of Alabama extra point. Coming here from William Murray. Don't see many straight on kickers anymore. Murray has his extra point wow. blocked. Well, you know, that first one just kind of scooted over and didn't have a lot of height on it. And that one had even less. Zarian Mack getting his hands on it. Ashton Ashford having a big first half here for the Ramsey Rams. A look at some of his highlights tonight. And all on the previous scoring drive here is Ashford. The workhorse, they just went to him time after time, and then they punch it in here for the touchdown. That's some really good offensive line blocking right there. Really good offensive line blocking. Yeah, they went right after the Charles Henderson defense. And yeah. Pretty nifty move, movement by that young man, too. Yeah. The scoring drive presented by Aldot. Seven plays, 46 yards, just two minutes of time off the clock. And just like that, Ramsey retakes the lead. 13 to 10 is what has been a very competitive first half here in the 5A state championship game. Coach, Coach, uh, as we get a look at the blocked extra point, good penetration once again there by Zarian Mack. Talk about what's some of the most fulfilling parts of your your work with the Coach Safely Foundation, because I know you've been at this for yeah. several years. Well, we, we're highly involved with the Park and Recreation Association, the Alabama Park and Recreation, uh, Executive Director uh, Natalie Norman. We work constantly to make sure we use their network. They, they got 95 agencies, recreation, park recreation agencies across the state, and uh, that's our that's our primary partner in this. So we're we're we've got we've gotten into the larger cities. I mean, we you know we're we're in where there is a strong park and recreation program. We're in those cities. We're working now to reach into the smaller cities. And Alabama is a state of small cities, and you just have to go about it a little differently. And we're using our relationship with school systems and with municipalities to really uh, get compliance with the law that reaches, uh, so it'll reach everywhere. All right, so Charles Henderson will take over first and 10 at the 35. Coach, we're going to keep you here. Yeah, for I'm the for watching the game, and I'm with, i got a defensive coach here between he and I. You call yourself a defensive coach? I, I, I'm not sure what I am these days, Coach, but <laughs> sure, I'll be that tonight. That's yeah. good. Well, that's the way I remember it. <laughs> and I'm not sure what I remember anymore. <laughs> we've got a timeout on the field by Ramsey. But anyway, we've got you here for about three more minutes or sure. so. But, Coach, i, I, I got to reminisce with you a bit. 
people who follow college football know the name Jack Crow, and you, you've coached at the highest level in this game. And I have to ask you, coming back in this stadium tonight, Jordan-Hare Stadium, where you spent some very good years as the offensive coordinator for Auburn, legendary coach Pat Dye. Talk about some of the memories that you, you feel when you come back in this place. Well, number one, four years, I think we lost three games in this stadium. That's a pretty good memory. It was more cheers and boos. In fact, we never got any boos. But, of course, I had uh, I had a chance to coach Bo Jackson. And uh, it started out, I remember we played Wake Forest. We didn't know what Bo could do. I mean, he came here, you know, because Alabama promised him he'd play line. I mean, told him he'd play linebacker. They weren't going to let him play running back. I think they regretted that decision. <laughs> You but think as so, we get, coach? yeah, but I, I I think as we played along, you're starting to go, oh wow, ah. and 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 it really threw me off balance. In fact, I'd go to I'd go to clinics and people want to see the plays we run, and I'd always draw up the wish one in the circle at the at the at the left halfback would be three times as big a circle as the other circles because I'm saying I'm telling you I'm not sure this will work if you don't have one of these, <laughs> and thought, thought. it just became. Uh, and what was over with, I was part of a myth. And it's hard to coach a player when there's a myth involved of what he could do, when he was going to do it. And it got to be really tough on me. It almost made us not friends, but I'll, I'm glad to say I've been to his house and visited with his, you know, we're friends. It was a challenge. He was the freakiest athlete, I think, anybody's ever been around him. The closer you got to him, the more freaky you knew he was because he would do things playing around that you'd, you know, you'd walk off the field saying, did he really do that? <laughs> Maybe he was a freak. Second and down a great at, person. Second down at 12 coming up. What was it like to work with legendary coach Pat Dye? Oh, I loved him. I mean, I, I don't know what our relation. People remember him chewing me out all the time. But I tell you what, we, we had a brotherhood. I mean, really. And I wasn't really sure what it was until I left. And he'd read we did something where I was coaching at Arkansas somewhere. And, He'd call me up and chew me out again. Why'd you do that, Jack? And he, you know, he'd stick his finger in my chest. I'm the head coach at Arkansas. We were in an SEC meeting. He stuck his finger in my chest. Why, why you, why'd you say that? Like I was his little brother, and he had programmed me a certain way, and if I didn't do what he expected me to do, he's going to chew my ass. Excuse my French. I mean, so it, it was a different uh, think, kind of relationship. I think, I think that's a pretty accurate statement, actually. <laughs> Can, can I throw one thing in about? You sure can. Can I throw one in? in Especially in, after in, that, in, in, take it away. <laughs> uh, one thing about Coach Dye, you know, when I was at Troy, we were in the we were in the playoffs, and it poured down rain, and we had no place to practice. And uh, I called Coach Dye, and long story short, two hours later, we're on, we're on a bus and, and, and on our way to Auburn, Alabama, and we're practicing the indoor yeah, facility, and, 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 and saved us. And and uh, I mean, he could not have been been oh. nicer and, and and really more gallant oh. helping us for, to prepare. I'm telling you, I love the man. He's classy. He, I mean, I, if anybody thinks there was ever really any ill will between he and I, they need to forget it. It's like brothers fighting it's about what it was. Charles Henderson picking up the first down out near midfield. So the Trojans trying to answer the score from Ramsey Adams with a little pass out to Carson. That is his first catch of the game, and he. It's a good yardage after the catch to the 43. Mickey, I noticed you haven't asked me about my favorite uh, uh, memories of being here at, at Jordan Hare. You and I and don't, are going to be together. And, and don't all. bother. <laughs> uh, you and I have more time together. <laughs> Coach Crow's out of here in about a yeah, minute. Y'all no, no, no. can cover it. <laughs> hey, let me say this, Mickey. The, the people that are doing these games, I'm not sure I'm worthy to be here standing with y'all. But y'all doing a great job, yeah. by the way. Appreciate that, Coach. Coach, it's I'm good, telling you, man, you, you know the game as good as any coach yeah. knows the game. Yeah, that's very nice of you to say. And you were the guy that knows how to do his part, too. This is, this is, this is good work. Well, we have, work. we have a lot of fun together. And, of course, calling these games and, and watching these young men compete as, high, as hard as they do is pretty doggone special. Yeah, Co Coach special. Coach Crow, what's your thoughts on the evolution of the Super, what is now the Super 7 State Championships, the rotation from the three different venues in the state of Alabama? I think it's good for people to be on this campus and be on Tuscaloosa's campus, but I think it's really probably better suited for Birmingham, if you want to know the truth. I think if you took a – because it, it allows more people to come to a centralized location. It's hard to get around a university campus. Now, I may be showing my Birmingham prejudice, but I think it's more like a bowl game when you go there. It's hard to create that bowl excitement across a college campus like, like when you pull up here.
I'm sure Auburn and Tusk, Birmingham and I mean Auburn and in fact I know the mayor and I'm sure he's going to chew me out for that <laughs> you ask me I got one problem you ask me you're going to get it <laughs> That I got for bad die. <laughs> well, I, I, I do think, though, to those to those young men on the field right here. Oh, it means a lot to getting me. Getting the chance to oh, play yeah. in either one of those two stadiums is yeah. a lifetime experience. Yeah, I, I, I believe that, too. Parker Adams is going to be, I think he's got the first down on second down and yeah. short. As the official comes in, I think they're going to spot him with enough yardage at the yeah. 28. I think he's going to have it by about eight inches. Well, they've come right back and answered. I mean, they... Uh, Ramsey stuck it right down their throat, and they've marched it straight down the field. See if they can retake this lead. And it will be a first down just inside the 29 is Coach Charles Hambright. See this team move the ball, move the ball methodically against this fast, talented, and athletic Ramsey defense. Adams. Goes deep down the field toward the end zone. Pass incomplete, wow. just over the outreached hands of Trevin Brown. They tried to hang a lot up. of skill players in this game. Yeah, there are. Tried to hang up that post and let him run under it, but nice closing speed on the football and watch him knock that ball away. Just an excellent job there by James Jones. So second down and ten after the incompletion. Seventeen to play here in the second quarter. Second down and ten. Back to the ground game. This is Boyd on the carry. And he is taken down by Ramsey's Fletcher Taylor after a gain of seven. Here's a third and three upcoming. Pretty good speed right there. I thought for a minute that he was going to be run down at the line of scrimmage, but it just ran, it just really blew right by that edge player. Boy, they move him all over the field. Makes him, makes him so tough to defend. Take it just inside the 19 for a first down. So third down and about two and a half. Boy, hit behind the line of scrimmage. First man there was Ramsey's Jermaine Parker, the junior linebacker. Yeah, I, I tell you, Parker hit that A gap, the area between the center and center and the guard, right at the snap. Watch him right here coming right through that gap, unencumbered uh, yeah. in the backfield. He's not going to let go, and he had a lot of help too. So fourth down, they send in the field goal unit. Nicholas Pearson connected on a field goal just a few moments ago. So they'll spot this one down at about the 29. So a 39-yard attempt coming up here for Pearson. And the kick is away, and the kick is right through there. Coach Jack Crow, thank you for joining us. And best thank of luck in your me. work with the Coach Safely Great Foundation. Great to see you, Coach. See you guys. Take a break and return to Jordan-Hare Stadium. You're watching the Super 7 Football Championships. Time out on the field. As a paramedic, you wouldn't believe the things that we've seen. I've seen all types of horrible things. I mean, we're there basically picking up the pieces from your worst day. Everyone is just driving and not paying attention. We all have the same goal. All of us want to go home alive and safe and harm nobody else in the process. Slow down, be careful, care about the other people on the road. Don't be the reason that someone else doesn't go home tonight. The internet, it's how we learn, experience, and connect to the world. But all of that powerful information needs a really powerful home, a data center. Like this world-class facility we invested $600 million to build right here in Alabama. But keeping the world's information at your fingertips isn't all we do. Our data center supports thousands of jobs. We provide resources to our community and generate more than a billion dollars for the state economy. We're doing our part for a better Alabama because Alabama is our home too. Be a great coach. 
We need you. Our kids need you. Motivate them. Challenge them. Inspire them. Pay attention and know the facts. Every injured youth is a loss. So let this be our goal. Our collaborative goal. Our unified goal. Our name is our mission. Coach safely. It's the mission. It's the purpose. It's the law. Coach safely. Win without losses. And time now for the Children's of Alabama Super 7 schedule. It has been a busy day today here in Auburn. It got started with the 3A state championship game this morning. St. James defeating Piedmont 45-28. And the 1A championship game this afternoon, it was Leroy impressively over Pickens County 42-20. And, of course, last yesterday and then last night you had Auburn winning the, the flag football state championship. Then it was Thompson knocking off Auburn last night in the 7A state championship game. And, of course, we have... 4A, 2A, and 6A state championship games all coming up for you tomorrow from right here at Jordan Hare Stadium in Auburn. Expect another great day as well. Uh, sunny skies predict forecast for tomorrow. Uh, temperatures in the 60s, so come on out and enjoy all the exciting state championship football games here in Auburn tomorrow. We still got a lot to go in this one. Good return here by Jamarcus Jones as he steps out of bounds across the 40. And, Coach, we're tied at 13 here late in the second quarter. This has been a very competitive 5A state championship game. Yeah, it really has. And I tell you, Ramsey has had a, a, really a huge advantage on kickoff returns now. You know, they had the long one that uh, that set them up. Uh, that's another good return. And, of course, we had the, the uh, attempted uh, sky kick uh, that got them great field position. So they, they've used kickoff returns to great advantage. You know, one thing that's a little interesting to me, uh, Parker Adams has only thrown three passes in this game. I really thought he'd throw more than that. And, of course, Ashford, again, 90-some yards, but he's not going to get any on that one. Ashton Ashford stopped for a very short game, one of the few times tonight that Charles Henderson has wrapped him up as Ashford has had himself a really good first half, 94 yards rushing on 17 carries. And in that time, Charles Henderson was able to get some penetration at the line of scrimmage, which uh, I think that's going to be a key. They've got to find a way to get more of that. Second down, they give to Ashford again. Boy, he has had a lot of success over that left side. And this is a huge gain of about 19 yards to the 41-yard line, and that'll move the chains for Ramsey. Yeah, and again, that, 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 off ta that off tackle area to the left, you can see there's no blue shirt out there. And he's out in coverage, and there's got to be some kind of edge player uh, to not let that ball leak outside, just uh, uh, really uh, uh, Ramsey has been very effective with this as we see a, a player down for Charles Henderson. Hey, Reese, find a, find a way for us to get back over that. Don't have a number. And hope the young man is okay. And there's... Still attending to the injured player at about the 47-yard line. Yeah, you see Coach Hambright out there immediately. It's like they're yeah. taking a look at the right lower leg, possibly. Yeah, they're going to get him up. <laughs> that is Damian Hart, number eight. And let's take a look at the road to the finals for the Ramsey Rams. And, you know, they're based out of... Uh, the Birmingham area, they had a couple of, uh, I wouldn't say easy games in the first two rounds, but not much trouble getting past Southside and then Gunnersville. And then, tell you what, you talk about back-to-back -back tough games in the quarters and semis there with wins over Leeds at Pleasant Grove. Yeah, those, those last two are, are really, really a, a tough row to hoe right there. And, uh, you know, got, got through them. And, of course, here they are playing for a, a state championship. You know, both these teams have won state championships. As Coach mentioned earlier, Ramsey won the – 6A title back in 2016. Charles Henderson actually won a state championship in 1980 as a as a 3A team back when there were four classifications in the state of Alabama. Here's Ashford again, another good gain on first down. Yeah, that 80 team was led led by the late Jay Jeffcoat, just a, a, a great man and a great football coach. Uh, you know, just a good, really a good spot to highlight a, a real gentleman and uh, one of the great coaches in the history of this state. Ashford taken down just short of the first down. It's going to set up third down and about a yard. Ramsey is three for five on third down conversions here in this first half. 
Ashford gets it again. No surprise there. He was hit behind the line of scrimmage, but fought forward and got the first down. He broke the tackle of Zarian Mack behind the line of scrimmage. I'll tell you what, I bet if we had their weight room uh, statistics, I bet he squats and power cleans per, pretty good amount of weight. Watch this strength right here. He is hit right there. He just runs through him. 21 carries, 121 yards in this first half for this young man, Ashton Ashford. Timeout on the field with 3.12 to play here in the first half. We, a moment ago, we took a look at Ramsey's road to the state championship game. Now here's a look at Charles Henderson. They had a tough first round win over Williams in 20 to 16, then uh, handled Tallahassee in the second round 34 7. Then, kind of like Ramsey, they had really tough matchups in the quarters and semis and back to back wins over UMS Wright and Faith Academy. That's very impressive. Yeah, that's two of the, two of the very best traditionally 5A teams in the southern part of the state of Alabama. Uh, beat, uh, beat UMS Wright in Troy. And then uh, went on the road and uh, beat Faith Academy in the uh, in the semis. And of course, UMS Wright is is coached by uh, Coach Curtis, who is one of the one of the leading uh, uh, all time winners in the state of Alabama. So as we return out of the timeout, it is first and ten. Ramsey just inside the thirty. Ashford. Cuts it back up inside. And, Coach, they are really just wearing out the left side of the line of scrimmage. Yeah, they really are. You know, that time, um, uh, Jawan Boyd was was that edge player was out there, but uh, a little limp leg by Ashford, and he broke right inside of him untouched uh, for a nice, uh, as you can see, seven, eight-yard gain right there. Second down and three. Here goes Ashford, and he is in for the touchdown. He will just not be denied the Department of Human Resources touchdown. It looked like the Department of Human Resources led the way through that hole right there. They were in the power play to the right side. They sealed it down, just caved in the uh, uh, the right side and uh, uh, wrapped that, that guard around, and that young man did the rest. And I'll tell you what, uh, he is uh, having quite a show here in the first half. Well, we go back and forth. And here's the electric co-ops of Alabama extra point attempt from William Murray. Had his last one blocked. And this one is right through there. So that extends the lead to 20 to 13 with 2.41 to play here in this first half is Ashton Ashford, 153 yards rushing in this first half, and here he gets into the end zone for the third time tonight. Well, you see the, you see the, the seal by the center and, and the guard, the kick out by the tackle, and the lead through with the wraparound, and boy, he hits that hole and just runs through it, an upper body arm tackle into the end zone. Coach, Come, this young man only 5'9", 180, but he runs like he's 6'9", 180. Well, well, you know, those short running backs that have that power, very, very tough to tough to tackle. You Is that how, low center of gravity absolutely. tough for defenders to handle? Well, it's really, really tough, and a short running back's hard to see him. And there's your scoring drive presented by Al Dodd. Seven plays, 59 yards, just a minute 58 off the clock, and Ashford with his third touchdown run of the night that 22 yard run the longest run from scrimmage for Ashford again 153 yards rushing in this first half and coach Ronnie Jackson has really been leaning on that running game and it's been working and I think that uh, you know I think that, that uh, he's gotten down to business I think I, I think Ashford you, you know how I think he's got down to business you know how I can tell took his earrings off I think he's getting ready to get down and dirty now and here's your Department of Human Resources kickoff. So we're getting set for the kick from William Murray. Been a busy young man here in this first half. And this kick will be taken at the 20-yard line. A nice return in the works here for the Trojans as they will have good field position out at about the 44-yard line thanks to the good return by Jawan Boyd. Really, really surprised that they kicked it to him, but 
They did, and the result is really good field position for uh, Charles Henderson, and see if they can answer. 2.31 left in the half. they got plenty of time. And two timeouts left as well. So the Trojans back on offense. Parker Adams has only attempted three passes tonight. He's completed two of them for 82 yards. He looks to throw here on first down. He goes deep over the middle, and this is nearly intercepted. Great break on the football that time by Jermaine Ford. Yeah, that post route, route hung up in the, in the middle of the field for a long time. That safety you see him coming over and breaking on it. Almost picked. So second down and 10 as the Trojans took a deep shot there on first down. Adams drops back the throw, steps up, still looking, kind of swings it out and gets it to Boyd, and he is knocked out of bounds at the 49 yard. A correction, that is Coleman. Kind of nice improvising there from Parker Adams. And that's actually a lateral. There's nowhere else to go with the football. And picked up a little bit with it. Sets so up third and four. It's a big third down now. You know, they, they've got a match score for score here. Got to get to the, to the 49. Well, just past the 49, I think. So third down and four. Adams getting the play in. Coleman shifts back up for protection, then they hand it to him. And just nowhere to run. But every gap sealed there by the Ramsey defense, led by number 30, Cameron Carson. Yeah, well, you, you, said it, you said it all, making nowhere to go right there. They tried to run the zone play to that side, and it just was shut, shut off and shut down in a hurry. So that brings up fourth down, and that'll bring in the punting unit. Charles Henderson unable to, unable to take advantage of the good field position they had after the kickoff return. <laughs> Nicholas Pearson standing back to punt, and we've got a timeout taken. You know, pretty interesting stat right here, Mickey. Since that first uh, pass to him, uh, Jawan Boyd's uh, total offensive totals are 11 yards. Uh, so they've done a good job of uh, of quieting him down in a hurry. He has not had the impact on this game that he did in either one of those last two playoff games that we just talked about, and they're going to have to get him more involved if they're going to win this football game. Yeah, definitely a big change in strategy. Jawan Boyd is in. Years. Scored on the 64-yard touchdown reception on the first play from scrimmage, and it has been quiet the rest of the first half. It really has. You know, he's really only touched the ball two times since then. If targeting him on a couple of passes, but uh, not able to not able to get it done as he has been double covered. By the way, coming up at halftime, it'll be the Jefferson County halftime show. Let's hear what Jefferson County residents say about how much they like Jefferson County as this kick will hit at the 16 and will be down right at the 10 yard line with 40 seconds to play here in the first half. Well, how does Ramsey play it here, coach? Well, you know, I was just going to say, do you take a shot or do you uh, now taking a shot here might might mean put it in number two's belly and see it. See if he can pop one for a lot of yards. You know, you might, you know, you've got the lead. You might want to be conservative. And make sure you don't get a turnover or mistake right here, late in the half. You know, we haven't heard a whole lot from Jalen Jones, who has 69 catches on the year, 1,246 yards. He's been relatively quiet, just two catches for eight yards. We'll see how the Rams play it here. First and 10 at their own 10. And a 
throw it up top. Pass is incomplete. Double coverage over there against the aforementioned Jalen Jones. Coach, they were looking his way, but he was just well covered. Yeah, yeah. Really fortunate that wasn't uh, that wasn't picked. Uh, they closed on that ball in a hurry. So second and ten. That play only took six seconds. Kind of get the feeling we might see number two here. You know, I, I think that maybe you discretion might be the better part of valor, part of valor right here. And they do hand it off to number two, Ashford. Number Picks two, up four Ashford yards to the 14, and, and unless someone calls a timeout, that may very well take us to the end of the first half. Boy, he runs so strong. That one looked really well defended, and you look up and it's, it's four yards. And we will have a timeout taken. Puts uh, puts Ashford at 157 yards for this first half on 25 carries. Charles Henderson will use one of their remaining two timeouts, stopping the clock with 11 seconds to go here before halftime. Who's third down and six? We've seen some workhorses today. You know, Jack Hayes in the three A game. I don't know how many times he carried the ball. Hayes already already carried the ball 25 times. Hit you go call the timeout. Why'd could, you waste six? Could he hit 50? Seconds? You go call the timeout. Later, call it. And again, we talk about Ashton Ashford, coach. It is just, uh, you know, it's just like this young man just got stronger as the, the first half has gone on. Yeah, really has. It, it, you know, what you see is, is that he takes most all those licks, you know, with his shoulder pads. You don't get to his body very much at all. It's all good running backs. See, there's a grab around the top of the shoulder pads. Not going to get into his body. He runs so strong. And look at why look at well, he's got 157 yards on 25 carries. And they give it to him here, and he's going to pick up the first down and more. Still on his feet out across the 30 yard line. Wow, what a. Way to send us to the end of the first half is Ashton Ashford, clearly the story of the first half for the Ramsey Rams. Three touchdowns here in the first half as Ramsey will take a 20 to 13 lead into the locker room at halftime. And a reminder coming up momentarily, we will send it down to the field. Kevin Skarpinski and the Jefferson County halftime show that run's going to put him at about 175 yards but first let's send it down to Susan Carruthers standing by with coach Ronnie Jackson hey coach you told me before the game that your team just needed to play Ramsey football are they doing that yeah they're definitely playing Ramsey football um we we know we can just go downhill and run the football and um we, we just got to continue to do what we do what are you going to tell them in the locker room uh, just continue to do what we're doing um I, I think we can out we can wear them down um, but again, this is a really good team, and so we just got to make sure we, we continue to execute and do just do the things that we normally do. So, all right, good luck, coach. Thank you, appreciate it. it sounds like a lot more of number two in the second half, coach. I, I, uh, I would think so, and, and, and you know, that last run got him to 176 yards. We'll return to Auburn, Alabama, the Super Seven, in just a moment. What is a protector? Is it always a hero, bigger than life? Look and you'll find protectors all around us. At Protective, it's at the heart of who we are. For more than a century, millions have relied on us to make retirement more about wishes than worry and life insurance more about legacy than loss. We're by your side, helping you protect what matters most because we're all protectors. Hi, I'm Lionel Richie. And I have traveled all over the world, but I consider Tuskegee, Alabama as my home sweet home. I have such a pride in this state and I know that there's something I need to tell you that's of great importance. Vote. Register to vote and get your voter ID today. It really is easy. Easy like Sunday.
Are you an enthusiastic sports fan? Want to have fun and get in on the action? Heck yes, that'd be awesome. Have great attention to detail? Want to stay active? Definitely. Want to give back to the student athletes in your community? Obviously, yes. Then you'd make an excellent high school sports official. We need more officials in Alabama. Because with no high school officials, there are no high school sports. Sign up today at highschoolofficials.com. Without a crowd is just a scrimmage. A performance without an audience is just a rehearsal. Without your presence, high school sports and the performing arts aren't possible. Ensure that these essential extracurricular activities continue to enrich the lives of students in Alabama. Purchase a ticket to your local high school's game or performance. This message presented by the AHSAA. Jefferson County Halftime Show. We're here on the field in Jordan-Hare Stadium. Halftime of the Class 5A State Championship game. The Ramsey Rams on top of the Charleston Henderson Trojans 20-13. to It's been an explosive first half. I'm your host Kevin Skarbinski here with Coach Bill Clark. And Coach, the junior running back for Ramsey, Ashton Ashford, again and again and again. If my numbers are right, 25 carries in the first half. How often do you see that? You know, I mean, you know, and when you say you got a hot hand, you feed him. But you know, I mean, that what if he if we get to sign us 50 for the game, <laughs> that would probably be a record. But you know, he's he's low to the ground, very you know thick lower body. You know, as we talked about some of the Mark Ingrams and and those kind of guys, yeah, Trent, Trent Richardson. Richardson yeah, yeah, I mean those. You know, I mean Dwayne McBride. At UAB, you know, thick, strong uh, yards after carry. I mean, I think that's the thing we're looking for. But he's he's explosive. Uh, be interesting to see what he does the second half. It will. Yeah, Debo McBride led the nation yep. in rushing Correct. for the UAB Blazers this year. It was a first half of explosive plays. Uh, obviously, more of the running game for Ramsey. And then Jaiwan Boyd, the do-everything uh, wide receiver, running back, Wildcat, return specialist for Charles Henderson. He caught a long touchdown pass. So it is, Ramsey is more familiar with this stage, yeah. although they've had to get through Pleasant Grove and that hasn't been easy in right. the last few years. Charles Henderson has not won a state title since 1980. They've only played for one since in 2013. They came up short, but now they're in the game. Yeah. They've got to feel good, don't you think? As the underdog going into the locker room, only down seven. Yeah, and I think you got you got down there twice. They they got stopped, but came away with points with a field goal. Obviously, the very first play of the game. You know, they look out, looks like zero coverage. You know, they look up and they take a shot and they hit it. So that was a, that was a great way to start the game. This is a really good game, back and forth. Um, you know, once again, who who comes out, who makes a great adjustment, in the second half, and comes out and plays well in the second half. Got to ask you about a pivotal play in the first half. A surprise onside kick from Charles Henderson that looked an awful lot like the onside kick Alabama sprung on Clemson in the 2015 National Championship game when no one could stop anybody right. at that stage. And Nick Saban gambled, and they executed it perfectly. The kicker puts it, kicks a little pooch kick, yep. and, a, and a, a, a teammate runs under it, catches it on the fly. Exact same thing happened here, but they called interference on Charles Henderson. So it nullified what looked like a brilliant call. Do you under, I, I didn't really understand. I didn't see the interference myself. Yeah, you know, the thing that, I, that has always been understood is if, if somebody's fair catching it on the other side, you've got to give them the ability to catch it. I couldn't see that. So, you know, with somebody trying to make an attempt at a fair catch and then you caught it in the air. Now, obviously, if it hit the ground, uh, I think no problem. But I didn't see anybody that. I think that was the call. So, you know, that'll be one after the game. We'll have to, to hear what happened. And Charles Henderson was in the lead at that time, 10-7, to 7, and who knows. But then Ramsey gets the ball back, and they drive down for another 
touchdown. You know, and that's what we two. say. What is the play? You know, and you know that a lot of times you don't know till you go back at the end of the game and you say what what changed the momentum? What could have what could have really put Charles Henderson maybe on their way? You know, who knows? So that that would be a, a point we'd go back and look at later. Well, we've got a very competitive game here as we sit at halftime of the 5A state championship game. Ramsey 20, Charles Henderson 13. Stay with us. We've got more coming up on the Jefferson County Halftime Show. I know it's early, but it's okay to move around in your seat, do what you got to do. What is a protector? Is it always a hero, bigger than life? Look and you'll find protectors all around us. At Protective, it's at the heart of who we are. For more than a century, millions have relied on us to make retirement more about wishes than worry and life insurance more about legacy than loss. We're by your side, helping you protect what matters most because we're all protectors. The internet. It's how we learn, experience, and connect to the world. But all of that powerful information needs a really powerful home. A data center. Like this world-class facility we invested $600 million to build. Right here in Alabama. But keeping the world's information at your fingertips isn't all we do. Our data center supports thousands of jobs. We provide resources to our community and generate more than a billion dollars for the state economy. We're doing our part for a better Alabama because Alabama is our home too. Welcome back to the Jefferson County Halftime Show. We are back here on the frozen tundra of Jordan-Hare Stadium. I'm glad we're not in Green Bay, Wisconsin. We're at halftime of the Class 5A State Championship game. Ramsey leading Charles Henderson 20-13. to You know, this incredible event, the Super 7, would not be possible without the incredible work and incredible cooperation and teamwork from... The sponsors that really bring these broadcasts to you and help put on this incredible event. We're pleased to be joined now by John Witten, field marketing specialist yes, from Jax. Yes, sir. John, thank you for being with us. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate you having us. Uh, this is a very important event to us every single year. Last year was at Protective Today, uh, and the last you know couple of days it's been here in Auburn. And um, you know the ASA partnership that Jax has had over the last decade has been very important to us because one of the biggest things that Jax is known for is you know being a family company you know we want to support our communities the best way that we can uh, we might not have a million people in the company but we try our very best to try to do as much as we can and you know Alabama is known for sports so uh, one of the things that we're going to be focusing on is sports and you know providing resources to these schools um, because they look to us as leaders uh, because a lot of our stores are in some of these smaller communities um, and you know Ramsey High School and uh, Charles Henderson uh, I know that we appreciate that uh, we know that we they appreciate us being here to support them as well and one of the great things about Jax is I know in my local community uh, my sons uh, have gone to corner high school and you go by the Jax after a high school football game or a Absolutely. high school basketball game and that parking lot is full you see and it's full of young people and they're have you know they're enjoying if they if they won the game if they even if they didn't win they're just enjoying that fellowship that family that community Absolutely. that Jax is all about. Absolutely, and you know we want to provide a very good product. Uh, we have some really good people that work for us. Uh, we're also expanding. You know next year we have twenty something stores that we're opening. Uh, a lot of them are in other other states. So we're you know we're known for opening in Birmingham, Alabama, in the Homewood location. We've been there since 1960. Opened up by Jack Cadell. 
So we've been around for quite some time. It was only in the last, you know, five to ten years that we really started to expand the way that we've uh, been here recently. So uh, look to us in areas in Georgia, Tennessee, Mississippi, and also some other places that might be to come in the future as well. How many restaurants do you have across the state of Alabama? <laughs> uh, I believe it's 235 locations at this point. So um, we're getting up there. Uh, we're, we're definitely uh, growing at a very rapid rate. And we're also looking for very good people to fill those roles that we have. Um, so, you know, uh, look for an application and try to fill it out and uh, see if you can't come enjoy the family. It, and that's a great I, I, I mention, too, as well. For high school students, for example, who are looking for part-time jobs after school, maybe in the summer, Jax provides great opportunities there, doesn't it? Absolutely. In a lot of, uh, in a lot of ways, a lot of these kids out here are actually uh, we employ. Um, you know, I don't know <laughs> about the people on this field, but I, I can almost assure you that there's been some kids that have walked through here and also some families that have actually uh, been employed by us and are also employed currently. So, um, you know, we, you know, provide tickets and stuff to families to come and see this game. We have some uh, here in attendance with us today. And, um, you know, we it's, it's just a little thing that we can do to show our gratitude uh, to the support that our fans have given us uh, in many, many decades that we've been uh, in business. Well. We're certainly grateful for the support that Jax provides to the Super 7. Absolutely. John Witten, field marketing specialist for Jax, thank you very much yes, for being with absolutely. us. Absolutely. Thank you. We're going to head to a break. We'll be back in a few moments to wrap up the Jefferson County halftime show from Jordan Hare Stadium. I know it's early, but it's okay to move around in your seat, do what you got to do. Change lives and achieve your professional goals with a rewarding career at the Alabama Department of Human Resources, the state's provider of social services in all 67 counties. Join our hardworking team that positively impacts the lives of children and families across Alabama. Speak to a recruiter by calling 334-242-1780 or emailing recruitment at dhr.alabama.gov. You're watching Alabama Public Television. Broaden your horizons. Alabama Public Television's coverage of the Alabama Super 7 Championships is made possible by these generous sponsors. It's nature's way of watering the earth. Thunderstorms are a different story. Poppy really freaks out if the lights go off. That's why we love Alabama Power. As soon as it's safe, they work day and night to get the lights back on, fast. Kind of like real life superheroes. I know they do it for everybody, but some do it just for Poppy. Say thanks, Poppy. <laughs> Welcome back to the Jefferson County Halftime Show. All right, back here in Jordan-Hare. Taking a look back at the first half of Ramsey and Charles Henderson. Ramsey with a touchdown lead heading into the third quarter. We're going to take a look at some highlights from that first half. You know, we focused on defense, Bill, talking before the game, and I still think maybe a big defensive play may decide this thing, but some very important offensive performances in that first half. Led again by Ramsey running back Ashton Ashford. Number two. Yeah, I mean, there you go. Running behind your pads, bouncing off of, of you know, would-be tackler. There's that vertical shot. That was the first play of the game. You know, no safety over the top. Good job by them. I don't know if that was just, you know, they looked down, saw it, and took advantage of it. Jaiwan Boyd. And here comes Ramsey. Big kick return. Yeah, that was the next play. You know, came back, answered them, and that's what you want to see, you know. Big play in the special teams, change the field position. They came down and scored right after that. Yeah, you think you've got momentum, and then right. they flip the script that's on right. you with a big play. We talked about special teams. Charles Henderson, two field goals. Um, 
you know, uh, you know, once again, you want touchdowns, but get down there and at least get points. Yeah, and that gave them the lead, 10 to 7. But then again, there goes that man, number two, Ashton Ashford. Right. There you go, just right up the middle. Uh, you know, and here we are with a blocked extra point, you know, which puts you within a field goal. You never know when that's going to make a difference. Yeah. There's another one by Charles Henderson. That's the second one. And those are big, you know, got, you know, just getting points. Yeah, that tied it up at 13. And then guess who? Yep. Running number for, two. That's right. 25 carries. We're going to see how he handles that in the second half. That's a bunch. <laughs> you know, Coach, do you, do you find like on a crisp, cold night like tonight, do you have a little more stamina, or does it? Eat, how does that affect a player, especially a running back, that you're that you're handing the ball this many times? You know, I, I think there's two things. One, obviously, the, the the lack of heat, you know, is a big deal. There's no doubt. You know, there's uh, that is a big deal. And then you just question the wear and tear, physical, you know, contact. You know, but uh, some of these guys can handle it. You know, some of them, sometimes the more you feed them, the better they get. He uh, sounds like he's maybe that guy. He may be. Well, I'm still waiting to see a big defensive play yep. from either Zion Grady, the edge rusher for Charles Henderson, or QB Reese, the do everything linebacker for Ramsey. Those guys have been big playmakers, and we haven't seen Ramsey score on defense as you mentioned before, 11 times in 13 games this year. They have scored, or 11 in 11 different games. Right. They've scored a defensive touchdown. Waiting to see if they can get that done tonight. All right, we are 30 minutes away from the awarding of another blue map. Who's it going to be, Ramsey or Charles Henderson? There's power in the simplest of actions, like one neighbor helping another, where everybody looks out for everybody else. Community is everything to the electric cooperatives of Alabama, and we're grateful for your trust to provide the energy you need giving you the power to power on. Your Alabama Electric Cooperatives, empowering lives, empowering communities. Communities don't just happen. They're built by people. From the big moments to the small acts of kindness. It's the authentic connections we make that define us. At Alpha Insurance, we know that every day you're building things that are worth protecting. Because for us, this is more than coverage. It's who we are. Alpha Insurance. Building tomorrow. Together. Partnering with TNT is a great opportunity for any group that is looking to raise funds for any kind of project. TNT, they work very hard to pick out the locations and they really work with you to help you be successful. This is kind of my mission. I can help uh, youth and adults raise the funds that they need to go on mission trips and to go to camp. I know it's early, but it's okay to move around in your seat, do what you got to do. chilly night in Auburn, Alabama as we are at halftime of the 5A championship game at the Super 7 High School Football Championships. It is Ramsey with a 20-13 lead over Charles Henderson. Both teams back out on the field getting set for the second half as we take a look at the Children's of Alabama Super 7 schedule. And uh, Coach, uh, why don't you just kind of talk about some of the things that have stood out to you so far and maybe look ahead to what's coming up tomorrow. Well, you know, we haven't really had, you know, one of those nail-biter down-to-the-wire championship games yet. Uh, we've had some great performances. Uh, uh, Thompson, uh, St. James, and uh, and Leroy have really, I mean, they played like champions. Uh, that, that, you know, that's why they are champions. Uh, this game is uh, uh, maybe has the earmarks of one of those nail-biters right here as it has gone back and forth. And I believe Charles Henderson is going to get the ball first to start, to, to, to start the second half. Um, and... Uh, if we look ahead to tomorrow, uh, you know, some interesting games there. The, the, the 4A game, I think, is going to see really some great running backs on both sides of the ball. Uh, 
Fife and B.B. Comer. Of course, Fife is a really a mainstay in, in this championship game. And B.B. Comer, with one of the best teams they have had in, in, in a long time, uh, Mountain Brook and Sarah Land, uh, two very distinct styles uh, on some great athletes, maybe on one side of the ball, maybe a player that some people say is the best player in the state of Alabama at any classification. And uh, so lots to look forward to uh, tomorrow, but lots to look forward to the second half. There you see the Ramsey Rams down in the their side of the field getting warmed up for the second half. Ramsey out gaining Charles Henderson 217 yards of total offense. The Trojans with 145 yards of total offense. So a very good job by this Ramsey defense coach because if you take away the 64-yard touchdown pass play on the first offensive play from scrimmage, Charles Henderson really hasn't been able to do much else offensively. No, they really haven't. A, a couple of interesting things to look at. Uh, you know, Boyd, uh, after that first drive, only has 11 yards of total offense uh, since that. Uh, you know, the, the very good quarterback for Charles, for Charles Henderson, uh, Parker Adams, has only thrown the ball four times. He's two for four for 82 yards. 64 came on that first play. I think those two guys are going to have to get a lot more involved if Charles Henderson is going to win this game. And let's send it down to the field now and check in with Susan Carruthers. Hey, Coach, we got a game on our hands here. What did you tell your players at halftime? Um, Play our, play our game. You know, uh, we're, we've settled down. Uh, we were we were kind of rushed a little bit in the beginning of the game, and, they, and that kind of played into that first half. But but I expect them to settle down and play a pretty good half, um, second half. What are you going to do about number two? We're going we're gonna to tackle him. I mean, essentially, we, we some, some fits we're, five, we're doing five, some we're, we're not. But when we fit, we just got to tackle him. Um, we, yeah, I think first half jitters are out the way, so we're going to see how the second half plays out. All right, good luck, Coach. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, Coach Charles Hembright joining Susan there. and well, They just got to wrap up number two. Number two has done a lot of damage in this first half. 176 yards rushing for this young man for he's Ramsey. Got, he's got 176 of the 212, right? Now, here's something to think about. You know, this guy runs with great body length. If, if I try to tackle you with you standing up like this, I can wrap my arms around your waist. I'm not going to do that. But if you're bent over and imagine your body's in kind of a Z, I can't get my arms around you. Well, if you're as strong as that young man is right there and you're trying to do that and you can't wrap your arms around him, uh, that becomes uh, an all-day sucker trying to <laughs> trying to handle that one. And that's exactly the way that he has run in the first half. He has been nothing but shoulder pads and knees. And uh, so they're going to have to, if they're going to tackle him, I think they're going to have to get more people in the box. Uh, they're going to have to get, you know, I, book in edge players on each side and, and try to literally put him in a box and not let him uh, get started. Got to get some penetration. And on the other side, the number two for Charles Henderson, Coach, he, he needs to kind of get going here in the second half. Well, I mean, he's, he's got he's to get in the ball game. He's got to see the ball a lot more. I mean, we talked about before the game he had scored in so many different ways, but it's impossible. And I don't mean this as critical as it's going to sound, but, I mean, it's impossible to score if you don't have the ball. So we'll see how this second half plays out. Charles Henderson will get the second half kickoff. They won the toss and deferred. So they will get the first crack at it here as we begin the second half of the 5A state championship game. William Murray has it teed up and ready to kick it off. The second half kickoff presented by the Department of Human Resources, changing lives throughout Alabama. And we are underway with the second half from Jordan Hare Stadium in Auburn. And this is Coleman. Nice job just fielding the bounce there and returning it out to the 29 yard line. Well, let's see how the uh, Trojans of Charles Henderson approach this on this first drive of the second half. So you can look at Parker Adams. Again, averages 189 yards a game, throwing 26 touchdown passes. Just hasn't been there yet tonight, with the exception of that very first play. So here we go, first down and 10. They started off with a running play, and this is Antonio Frazier. And Frazier with his third carry of the game, picks up four yards, second down and six. Yeah, followed the block that time of Big Connor Jones, 6'5", 285 wrapped around and led that way around. I think if he would have stayed a little bit more inside, uh, that 
ball might have popped for a little bit more yardage. Adams leaves it with Frazier again. Frazier spun out of one would-be tackle from Ramsey's QB Reese, but not much after that, only a gain of one. That'll set up third down and four. A big possession play right out of the gate here in the second half. Yeah, and a pretty conservative second down call right there. As I look and I think I see one Boyd at the top of the screen. Charles Henderson 0 for 5 on third downs here in this game. Now Boyd is at the bottom uh, of the little bunch set there to the right. Adams fakes the pitch looking downfield. Throws for Boyd and he's all tangled up and we're going to get an interference call against Jermaine Foy. Bit of an unusual route. Boyd came out and, and did a little little pirouette, kind of a hook and go. Uh, you know, usually that move is going to be really early in the route. That one was done about 15 yards downfield, but it it, it paid off with the interference call, and that'll be a big first down. See Adams coach it takes a shot there at the end of the play. It looks like he. Pass. Pass interference on the defense. 15 yard penalty. Results of the first down. Looks like he went through his progressions there before he threw downfield for Boyd. So they get the first down by way of the penalty out of the 50 yard line. Well, this sets them up, set them up in really good field position. Fresh set of downs. First down presented by the Alabama Department of Transportation. Here's Adams with a wild pitch, and I tell you, Boyd is lucky. He was able to recover that. Yeah, very ill-advised pitch. He'd already committed down to the inside. And James Jones for Ramsey got up with the football. Ramsey coaches saying it's their balls. We'll get another look at it. You watch, he, he's committed to the inside. It's kind of a two-handed pitch. And well, he, you know, he's down with you know with the ball. The Ramsey coaches are into this game. We, we've heard him a good bit. I think I could call some of their plays, but uh, as they should be, by gosh. I mean, that's, that's their guys down there. Second down and 12. Here is Coleman, and he is unable to get around the edge. Nice job setting the edge that time by Ramsey's Marquel Patterson. Yeah, Patterson, the inside, inside linebacker, comes inside out, really beats the block underneath you, and you got to kind of seal all that out. You're going to take a look at it right here. You see the double pulls right here. But you can see that, uh, you know, one of the things that you want to do as a defensive line, you want to keep those linebackers clean, keep blockers off of them. That's exactly what happened. And and uh, Patterson does a great job right there of diagnosing that play and making a big stop. Third and long. Adams back to throw. Zips it downfield. It's picked off at the 45-yard line by Ramsey's QB Reese. He's still going. And he will be tackled from behind. But... A turnover here by Charles Henderson. What looked like a, a good drive as they were getting out in the middle of the field. Then they throw the interception, and Ramsey will get the ball back. Yeah, I mean, uh, QB is just going to sit right on this route right here. You can see he's sitting right there, and Johnny on the spot makes the play. Now, he had a 38-yard pick in the semifinals now, so this is he's no stranger to this. That's really a great job of sitting there, baiting the quarterback, and then showing nice hands, too. That is the first turnover of the game, and it is a big one as Ramsey will have it first and 10 now at the 28 of Charles Henderson, and they start off Guess who? the second half with the way they ended the first half, and that is handing the ball to Ashton Ashford, and once again, a big pickup on first down as we update Ashton Ashford's numbers here after that carry, Coach. 27 rushes, 179 yards. And guess who? Only way to stop him is to throw the flag before they hand it to him. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. You know, you mentioned the performance by Jack Hayes for Piedmont in their losing effort in the 3A state championship game this morning, but these are incredible rushing numbers tonight by Ashton Ashford. I mean, I mean, they, they, they really are. And, and you, know, you know, when you rush that many times and have that kind of yards per carry, that's an exceptional performance. Second down and seven after the penalty. They hand it off to Ashford. 
Breaks the tackle behind the line of scrimmage, racing around the edge. Ashford is going to have a first down and fights his way down to the 12-yard line. I tell you, this young man just doesn't seem to get tired as he salutes the fans in the stands for Ramsey. Well, you're going to see Damian Hart comes flying off that edge. Now, you know, Hart averages about 11 and a half tackles a game, and, and you can see how strong Ashton uh, Ashford is. He just runs right through that tackle. And here he goes again. And he is wrapped up and taken down by Charles Henderson's Brandon Gibbons, but play goes for four yards on first down, second down and six. You know, you, you, you're certainly impressed with his speed, but the big thing about him is he's just so tough to bring down. He breaks tackles. He runs right through them. Here he goes again. He's in for the touchdown. His fourth rushing touchdown in this 5A state championship game, and Ashton Ashford is now over 200 yards rushing. Well, and his his cut ability, you know, you know, he, he kind of worked that one a little bit to the outside, planted that outside foot, and then cut it straight up north and south for the score. He's putting it on a show. Looks like he's got pretty good dance moves on the sideline, too. That young man look tired to you? Shoot, no. I'm telling you, these, these great ones now, when they, when they get it going like this, they can't carry the ball too much. And the electric co-ops of Alabama extra point is good as Ramsey takes advantage of the interception. They turn it into points. They expand their lead to 27-13. Let's go back, Coach, to the interception. Well, this is just, again, a great job by Reese of setting and baiting the quarterback and then high pointing that ball and taking it in for positive yardage show some strength right there as well really a great job by QB Reese and then the touchdown is Ashton Ashford again we got to give credit to that offensive line and coach you you, you, you were in the coaching business obviously for a long time it's and, and that is a position that you know very well, and that offensive line well, has been blowing open some big holes. For yeah, this that's man. exactly how you win games with, with what's up front. You see, you know, they took advantage of the, of the interception, 28 yards, four plays. He ran every one of them, scored on the eight-yard run. And that, now, that last run was really a work of art. You, it, it, you know, if you noticed on the replay, he widened it enough and then missed by the smallest margin on the widest defender and ran away from those interior pursuit guys by doing just that. Really great running. Mario Davenport picks up the kickoff and darts out to the 45-yard line to give Charles. I think we're going to get another look position. at it right here. Now watch him right here as he stretches this thing outside. Now watch stretches then right up the field north and south. See that arm tackle by number 54? If he hadn't stretched that thing as wide as he had, he would run right into a tackle right there. Just really, really great ability to miss by the smallest margin. So first and fifteen, first and ten now for Charles Henderson as the pressure now on the Trojan offense. This is Coleman on the handoff, and he is wrapped up from behind. Well, I don't mean I don't mean this as critical as it's going to sound, but Charles Henderson is not going to win this football game by running the ball between the tackles. It's just not going to happen. They haven't, been, they haven't been able to control the line of scrimmage near well enough to do that. Cameron Carson wrapping him up from behind. Second down at seven. Good look there at number 30. Six foot, 220 pound junior. He definitely looks the part. Here is Boyd in the backfield now. Trying to get him involved and he is going to be very close to the first down as he was taken down by QB Reese of Ramsey. So here's a third down and short. Nice little, nice little jump cut by Boyd to avoid the first uh, row of defenders and get into the, into the secondary. A little tempo here by Charles Henderson to try to spark themselves offensively. They give it to Boyd again, and if Boyd on his own, I think, is able to get forward progress, and he is. They're going to spot him just inside the 45. And that will result in only the fifth first down of this entire game for this Charles Henderson offense. Yeah, you know, you know they, they've uh, they have they've never been able really to get in sync. You know, they haven't been able to put uh, successive plays together. No, very few big chunk plays. 
This is Coleman on the carry. A collision, and he falls down at about the 42 for a gain of three. You know, very, very patient, conservative. Runs between the tackles. Don't mean that critical. Just you know, still a two-score game. Get a touchdown here. They're right back in it. Second down and seven. You know, one of the things with Ashton Ashford running the ball so well, it's 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 shortening this game. Well, it, it is, and and of course the other thing that it's doing is it's also shortening the opportunities for Charles Henderson offensively. Coleman unable to really get going. Nice just, play defensively that time by DeMarcus Wynn, the junior defensive lineman. Yeah, just nothing right there. You know, they shut off the inside when he tried to bounce it outside. Linebacker scraped and penetration inside took all that away. Coleman now right around 50 yards rushing in the game. It's third down and seven. Parker Adams here throwing the ball tonight. Not one of his typical nights. He's only two of five in that department. Let's see if they choose to put it in the air here on third and seven. And we've got a timeout taken here at the 454 mark of the third quarter. We'll take the break as well. Timeout on the field. Ramsey leading Charles Henderson 27-13 here in Jordan Air. Hi, I'm Lionel Richie. And I have traveled all over the world, but I consider Tuskegee, Alabama as my home sweet home. I have such a pride in this state and I know that there's something I need to tell you that's of great importance. Vote, register to vote and get your voter ID today. It really is easy, easy like Sunday. Are you an enthusiastic sports fan? Want to have fun and get in on the action? Heck yes, that'd be awesome. Have great attention to detail? Want to stay active? Definitely. Want to give back to the student athletes in your community? Obviously, yes. Then you'd make an excellent high school sports official. We need more officials in Alabama because with no high school officials, there are no high school sports. Sign up today at highschoolofficials.com. And back in Auburn after the timeout. And, Coach, uh, Penny, for your thoughts there? Well, I think those wheels are turning right here. And, and you know, I, I, you've got two real big problems. Number one, they still have not stopped this prolific running game by Rams. They're going to have to get more people in the box. Adams under duress gets rid of it and just has to throw it away. Well, and offensively, you know, they just have not been able to generate much at all. It's like it's, uh, this is a fourth down situation. Fairly decent field position. Looks like they're going to punt it now. Uh, they've got to get something, some kind of continuity going on offensively. And they just really, their ability to throw the football now. I mean, you know, you know they are one for five for uh, 18 yards since that first play of the game. And uh, once they start double coverage uh, to the outside on Boyd, it's not really much, much has worked right. So they will not go for it on fourth and seven. They bring in Pearson, and it's a fake. Pearson keeps it. He's got plenty of blockers on the edge, 
And Pearson appears to have the first down. Well, I tell you, he almost cut back away from that first down there at the end of the play, but you know, ran a little fake reverse and had looked like the entire sophomore class out in front of him uh, over on the right side. Nobody home for, uh, for Ramsey. Watch, you see the motion coming back. You're going to see the fake reverse and, and watch the blue shirts out in front, and there's not a white shirt in the house. It's really, really well designed by Charles Henderson. Is this going to be the lift that uh, is going to get him going? We'll see. First down at the 34 of Ramsey. Adams to throw it on first down. Goes up top for Boyd, who adjusts and makes the grab at the five and then gets into the end zone for the touchdown. Well, you know, sometimes you got to go to your go-to guy and just throw it up there and see if he'll make a play, and that's exactly what happened. Looked like a basketball player going up for a rebound. Well, this game just got a lot more interesting, partner. Just what the doctor ordered for Charles Henderson. Wow. Well, a, a fake punt and uh, followed up with, a, with the uh, big pass for a score. If you're going to fake the punt and make it, you might as well do what they just did and score. <laughs> right? Let's take a look at the fake punt first before the touchdown. Actually, this is the fake reverse off the punt and keep it. And you can see they, they, they caught Ramsey a little bit napping and, and looked like it was going to go to the house, but sets him up and, and then just take a shot. Give your guy a chance. He gets up, gets the football. Nice little spin move. And, you know, at the end, I don't know what happened to the defender on that side right there, but you know, he had a chance to make a tackle at the at the five and just kind of stopped. I don't know whether he lost sight of where he was on the field or what, but the result is a score. Fletcher Taylor kind of appeared to give up on the play and see the scoring drive. Eight plays, 56 yards, three minutes, 27 seconds. The touchdown pass from Adams to Boyd pulls Charles Henderson back to within seven. It's really interesting. You know, you know Taylor, I, I think he thought maybe they were in the end zone. You know, he, he knows what he's doing back there. He has three interceptions on the year, but anyway, the result is a touchdown, and that answers one question now. Kickoff coverage, which has not been great for Charles Henderson tonight, and can they stop this Ramsey running game? Here's our Department of Human Resources kickoff from Nicholas Pearson, and he booms this one into the end zone. So what a sequence there by Charles Henderson. And we're going to take another look at the touchdown pass from Adams to Boyd, and you see at the end of the play, Fletcher Taylor, number 11 in coverage, just almost like he's kind of confused about what's going yeah, on. See, he just, just stops right there. It looks like he could have certainly had a chance to make the play right there. I don't know whether he lost track of where he was on the field or what, but nevertheless, it's it's seven points. And Now, this, this is probably the drive of the game to this point. I think that's going to be a procedure. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. That'll back them up five. It'll be first and 15. One more look at the touchdown. And this is really a nice job of getting your body between the defender and the football. Watch him snatch that ball back away and use his body to shield the defender. Really nice. Here goes Ashford. And he just takes it out to around the 30-yard line. And that will be another Al Dot first down. And Ramsey hurries up to the line of scrimmage. Ashford gets the call again over the right side this time. Picks up about three, maybe four. Well, and, and, and Charles Henderson has had a very difficult time, even when they've had enough bodies in the area, of making tackles. Just, they just have had a, a rough, rough time. Actually, five-yard game, second and five. You like the decision here by Coach Jackson to go with a little tempo, Coach? Oh, I think so. I think it's a good time for it. Early 
and movement over on the right side of the Trojan defense. Were they drawn off? Well, I think that's the question right here. I think there was, I'm sure it looked like there was some early movement, but if it was simultaneous, it could go the other way. So we'll, we'll see. Got the two line judges talking to each other. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense. Five yard penalty, still second down. They see Coach Jackson not happy with the explanation he is getting. That'll back him up five and make it second and ten. And it right back to number two. And this time they wrap him up and they tackle him, as Coach Hambride wanted to see. Yeah, really good gang tackling that time. They ran right up the chute again with an isolation play and nothing. So here's a big third down and seven. I tell you, Ramsey's been really good on third down tonight. Five of seven. Here's a chance for this Trojan defense to get off the field and give the ball back to their offense down by seven. Biggest play of the football game to this point. Keenan's only attempted nine passes tonight. Let's see if they put it in the air. They fake and throw. It's complete. First down across the 50. Inside the Charles Henderson 40 goes Christian Stinson. Well, a little RPO action. You know, ran the fake uh, to uh, Ashford. And, and you can see the linebacker. You watch the linebackers. They're going to bite on this right here. And why wouldn't they? There's an open lane for the slant route in front of the safety, and the ball really uh, delivered perfectly in a nice route uh, by Christian Stinson as well. Six of eight on third down in the game for Ramsey. That was a huge conversion there. Now back to number two. Runs into his own blocker, and then is pushed back by Zarion Mack. But forward progress will give him three yards on the carry. Really a great call. Really a great call on the on the previous third down play. You see, this is a little RPO action. See, the both linebackers sit in the line of scrimmage playing the run. Opens up that slant route right behind them. The ball perfectly delivered. Result is a big first down. Here's Ashford, and he's going to have the first down inside the 25-yard line. He just keeps rolling up the rushing numbers. 35 carries, up around 250 yards rushing tonight for this young man. Well, and a big block now on the outside kickout block. By 5'7", 215 pound to Corey Foster. That sounds like a guy that could block. First down at the Charles Henderson 22. What an answer drive here in the works for Ramsey. They go back to Ashford. Great blocking on the right side. He's got nine yards down inside the 15 yard line. Really good push by the right side of that offensive line and Foster again, this time gets up into the linebacker, knocks him back four yards. Look at this movement by the white shirts right here. I mean, he's not touched until he's deep into the secondary. Second and one. Here comes Ashford again. First down as they stop his forward progress at the 11-yard line, but that'll be a first and 10 again for Rams. We have an injured Trojan defender in the secondary. So they stop play with one minute exactly to play here in the third quarter and attend to the injured player. Yeah, I didn't see him. I, you know, my eyes were looking inside. I didn't, I didn't see exactly what happened there. I mean, obviously, he's in a good bit of pain. I think, I think that's uh, Zachary Beatty. He was down. He's definitely away from the play. They're checking out the right leg of... Zachary Beatty. Coach, what a response here by Ramsey. I mean, Charles Henderson with the fake punt, the long touchdown pass. They had so much momentum. And then here Ramsey is knocking on the door, looking to score again. Oh, Ashton, um, I couldn't be more proud of that guy. Um, Ashton um, 
had a rough start in the beginning of just trying to make sure he's in the weight room and he would kind of dodge a little bit. And I told him I saw something in him. I just knew that he has that it factor also. He just had to put the work with it. And to see where he's come from to where he is right now, again, I, I'm so proud of him, man. And of course, that is Ramsey coach Ronnie Jackson speaking about his running back, Ashton Ashford, last week. Well, and you know, that's one of the many ways that coaches change lives by their influence. Not only did he get him in the weight room, guarantee if he got him in the weight room, he turned his life around. And we're going to have another procedure penalty yeah. against Ramsey. Yeah, the, the, the fullback was going to insert through the tackle Probably tight end out. gap. Both but, going. And he did. Just inserted a little bit too soon, and that's the procedure penalty that you see right there. Eighth penalty of the game against Ramsey. This backs him up five to the 16. But I tell you, with the way number two is running the football, I'm not sure it even matters. And here's an update on the numbers for Ashton Ashford. 37 rushes, over 250 yards. He has scored all four of Ramsey's touchdowns. And here he goes again. And he's going to pick up the penalty yard. You're close to it. Give him four yards. It'll be second down and 11. That's 38 carries now through three quarters of a football game. That's... Uh... <laughs> you're, you're not going to see that very many places, I'll tell you. Second down and 11. And that'll take us to the end of the third quarter. There you see Coach Jackson holding up the four fingers as Ramsey takes a seven-point lead into the fourth quarter of the 5A state championship game. We will continue with our live coverage of the Super 7 High School Football Championships from Auburn. Change lives and achieve your professional goals with a rewarding career at the Alabama Department of Human Resources, the state's provider of social services in all 67 counties. Join our hardworking team that positively impacts the lives of children and families across Alabama. Speak to a recruiter by calling 334-242-1780 or emailing recruitment at dhr.alabama.gov. What is a protector? Is it always a hero, bigger than life? Look and you'll find protectors all around us. At Protective, it's at the heart of who we are. For more than a century, millions have relied on us to make retirement more about wishes than worry and life insurance more about legacy than loss. We're by your side, helping you protect what matters most because we're all protectors. As a paramedic, you wouldn't believe the things that we've seen. I've seen all types of horrible things. I mean, we're there basically picking up the pieces from your worst day. Everyone is just driving and not paying attention. We all have the same goal. All of us want to go home alive and safe and harm nobody else in the process. Slow down. Be careful. Care about the other people on the road. Don't be the reason that someone else doesn't go home tonight. There's power in the simplest of actions, like one neighbor helping another, where everybody looks out for everybody else. Community is everything to the electric cooperatives of Alabama, and we're grateful for your trust to provide the energy you need, giving you the power to power on. Your Alabama electric cooperatives, empowering lives, empowering communities.
And the Ramsey fans, a lot to cheer about tonight as we enter the fourth quarter. Their team has a seven-point lead, 12 minutes away from the school's second state championship. Can they hold on? Well, this is a big sequence here. They face second down and 11 as they're trying to get more points on the board. They hand off to Ashford, and the play defended well by a host of Trojan defenders there is going to set up a third down and long. Now, that time as he tried to bounce it outside, you saw that edge defender unblocked to the outside, forced the ball back inside to the pursuit, and the result is a one-yard gain. That's what's got to happen if Charles Henderson is going to be successful against those outside runs. So third down and nine from the 10. They give it to Ashford. And Ashford is going to be taken down by Zarian Mack, another tackle for Mack. And it's going to be fourth down. And decision time for Coach Jackson. Do you try a field goal or do you go for it? Field goal situation here, you know, I don't, I don't think that's even going to be a possibility. I, you know, this would be the limit of their range, I think. And they're, they're going to go. And Charles Henderson with some confusion on defense. They just get the timeout called as they were not lined up properly. Timeout on the field. Charles Henderson. And those timeouts are precious. Here well, I was just thinking, like you this. know, I, I was just th thinking that, that, you know, that's one maybe you'd like to have back a little bit later in this quarter, but uh, you also got to get lined up on a very, very crucial fourth down right here. Boy, I, you know, for Charles Henderson, what a stop this would be. And for Ramsey, if they're able to convert, and take it in for a score, that would make it really, really tough. You know, we were talking a two score game with the way Ramsey has been able to to run the clock and run the football could be real real tough uh, even with a fair amount of time left you know we I know we we keep talking about number two but with the performance the way this game is played out you've got to you look at Ramsey they've got 338 yards of total offense 266 of that is from number two Ashton Ashford yeah I mean he and the offensive line I mean I mean they have been the story tonight I mean that it's just been uh, a tremendous performance by that young man. You can see 40 rushes, 266, 4 TDs, 6.7. Pretty darn good. Does he have six yards in him here? Fourth and six. Man, what a crucial play this is. And the crowd knows it. Both sides of Jordan Hare, fans on their feet. Fourth down and six. It's Keenan, another look to the sideline. Play clock just now under 10. They hand it all. Oh, they fake to Ashford. They throw, and it is incomplete. Well, tried to go with the RPO to the short side of the field. You know, that's always a little bit of a tough angle right there. Uh, that, that, that pass is easier to throw and catch to the wide side where you've got a little more room for those windows to develop. And a big stop for Charles Henderson right here. And you see the slant again. Lots of blue shirts around and just really nowhere to go with that football. So Charles Henderson takes over first and 10 inside their 10. Of course, one of the thoughts that go into the decision to go for it is if you don't make it, you pin them back deep. Absolutely. So the Trojans, the poor field position here. Let's see if it works out in Ramsey's favor, if they can get a stop. Adams fakes and throws downfield. It's intercepted at the 30-yard line by Ramsey's Jermaine Foy. And Foy stretches out, and they it's say a it's a touchdown. Well, you know, when you throw the fade, you cannot throw it inside. If you do, you always have the chance of the interception. Very well covered. The safety was over the top anyway, and when that ball was inside, it was easy pickings. And, boy, what a turnaround. I would say it worked out in their favor. I would say it most definitely did. And a wave of the pom-pom for one of the young fans in attendance tonight. And he, and he has the turnover belt. And I'd say very much uh, deserved. And they're dancing in the aisles on the Ramsey side. And here is William Murray with the electric co-ops of Alabama extra point attempt. Good snap. And he knocks it right through there. Back to a two-touchdown lead, 34-20. And 
we take a look at the, the interception. Well, this is, again, a streak route, and you cannot leave that ball inside, and you see that is well inside. Safety right there, right where he's supposed to be. Easy pickings. Nice job of taking that thing into the end zone. Pretty good transition now by the Ramsey defense. Watch them converge right now and become blockers immediately. That's really good coaching by the Ramsey coaching staff and a nice job by that defense of sudden change. Just a convoy down there and stretches that ball out and in the end zone. What a nice job by Jermaine Foy. Third interception of the year. Ramsey defense has picked off Parker Adams twice tonight. That one by Foy. The first one was by QB Reese. Now 10.42 to play. Still plenty of time, but back to a 14-point advantage now for Ramsey. And really the, the uh, pretty pro prolific Charles Anderson passing game just has, has not shown up with the exception of two long passes. The rest of the night has been, been tough going. And here is William Murray with a kick. A line drive kick down the middle of the field that will be picked up by Boyd. And Boyd with a good return out across the 35, taking off his feet at about the 37-yard line as we send it down to the field and check in with Susan Carruthers. Hey, guys, I went over and visited at the Ramsey sidelines earlier, and I met some Ramsey football alumni, and they were wearing some really big, really silver jewelry. Um, they, they tell me it was a turnover belt and a touchdown chain. The football alumni get to hang on to them until it's time to award them to one of the players who gets a touchdown or a turnover. They've done that several times tonight. Man, when she said a turnover chain, she wasn't kidding. <laughs> so you get a belt and a chain. Well, that's that's modern football. First and ten. Here's Charles Henderson back on the field, and Coleman slips down. A little frustration now. Actually, loses a half yard. Yeah, I don't know whether he tripped over his quarterback or, or what, but a little bit of frustration showing right now. Second down and eleven. The only offense they've really had, Coach, has been two long passes yeah. from Adams to Boyd. That's, a, that's it. Uh, yeah, the rest of the night they've had a little struggle. Second down and 11. They've got to find some offense here. Here's Coleman trying to get outside and cannot do so. Great pursuit down the line by Caleb Patterson, the senior. Yeah, Patterson uh, came into this game with, with 15 sacks. And you saw his closing speed right there. That's going to be a tackle for loss, not a, not a sack. But it's really nice closing speed by that young man. Sets up a third and ten. Well, if there's a must play in football, and there is, this is one of them. Adams with a long look now sets up the play. Three receivers to the wide side of the field. Now two come in motion to the short side. Play clock down to one as they snap it. Adams will just take off and run and will get nowhere. The first defender to get to him for Ramsey was number 47, that Dylan Robinson. And they had, the, they had uh, two over three into the boundary, meaning they had a, a one-man advantage, uh, but the route never really materialized. Just two short routes and one deep man that was easily covered by the uh, safety and nowhere to go with the ball and good closing again by the Ramsey defense as the scramble goes nowhere. So here's Nicholas Pearson back out to punt the football. A good kick. And taken by Ramsey's Jamarcus Jones. Look, Look at out. the speed. Jones, he's across midfield. Down the far sideline, taken out of bounds at around the 31-yard line, a dynamic return for Jamarcus Jones. You know, the Ramsey special teams have really, really been good tonight. They've been a big part of this game. Nice play there by Jones, the junior. Outstanding jobs. We're getting a look at the punt return. Yeah, 
Now this is a really a nice weaving run right here and a good no block there to keep from a penalty. Nice block there and he hits that seam and shows that speed. And this is Jones. It's kind of odd to see somebody other than number two run the football for we got a flag on the play. That was Jalen Jones with a nice carry, but we've got to check the flag. Showed some speed as he got around that edge. I, yeah, I was kind of in a little bit of shock. Didn't know what to say at first. <laughs> so I said number two looks like number nine now. Yeah. <laughs> this one's coming back. Get the call from the official. Ten yard run, holding on the offense. Five yard penalty. Check that ten yard penalty. Replay first down. Yeah, I guarantee you, the guys in blue and white know that if they could knock this one in, uh, that would that might be the knockout. Yeah, that might salt it away. First and sixteen, back at the thirty-seven after they mark off the holding penalty. Keenan. Goes deep for Jones. He adjusts, but the pass is incomplete. It was very good coverage on the back end that time by Stefan Mosley. It's really the first time they've tried Jones uh, deep tonight. I think we said earlier he had 69 catches coming in into this game with 15 TDs. So certainly a legitimate target right there, but very well covered. Only the 12th pass attempt of the night for Ramsey. We mentioned coming into the game that they actually averaged more yards passing per game than rushing, but not the case tonight. No, 195 to 174, but shoot, that 174 was eclipsed pretty quickly by young number two. And they've got That's all sides by the cheap. defense. Prior to snap, encroachment on the defense. Five-yard penalty. We play second down. Now, here's how important that is. It's, it's approximately 15 yards to have to get a first down. Divide that by three, that means you've got to average five yards a play. All right, now, now it's going to be second down and 10. Well, you know, that's just a little over three yards. And, and that, you know, in a game like this. You think that's doable with uh, number this, two? I think, I think it probably is. <laughs> they pass it out in the flat, and it is complete to Tramiel Washington. Boy, that's a name we haven't called much tonight, Coach. No, not at all. And, and you know, this is a three plays in a row that uh, Ashford has not carried the ball. I don't. I, maybe they've gotten bored. I don't know, and they want to get some other people involved in the offense. But uh, uh, Tramiel Washington has been a big part of this oh, offense absolutely. all season, but not tonight. Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not dissing him at all. You know, I mean, he's he's done a little bit of everything. Uh, he throws it, runs it, catches it, and. Uh, Got three on that play right there. So, uh, again, I think they're in four down territory, which means they got two chances now to get seven yards. You think that uh, Ashford is going to touch the ball in one of those two plays, but we'll see. Little Third down and seven. And they give it to Ashford. No, Keenan keeps. And they had everyone fooled, including me. Football came loose at the end. Was he down or not? I think the official's going to rule gonna the runner down at about the 20 yard line. Yeah, well, you know, those linebackers, of course, you know, they bit like hungry bass on, you know, on, on the run fake. And, gee, why would you? You know, and uh, you see right here. Yeah, it's close. Keenan did a nice job of reading. I don't know whether, that, whether he was down when that ball came out or not, but it's like we're moving on. Right now it is an L dot first down. Looks like they're going to milk that clock a little bit now. We're down to 6.20 to play here in the fourth quarter. Now it's the give back to Ashford. Ashford tiptoeing down the sidelines. You can tell that was a very smart player. He was trying to stay in bounds, but just got a, a toe out of bounds over there around the 16-yard yeah, line. He's not very happy about it either. You know, just uh, got a little bit too close to, to that sideline and, and hit that, uh, that boundary. Stop the clock at 613. 
Very, yeah. very stoic coach on the sideline. Second down and six. Here's Ashford over that left side. And we have seen that particular play so many times tonight. Yeah, picked up about five of it. We'll leave a, leave about a yard short. He's running off tackle to his left side. He's got a flag down, I believe. Yes, I see. Well, I, yep. Going to be an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty, the initial call against the Trojan defense. So this will move it closer to the goal line, half the distance. Very inopportune penalty right there. Maybe some frustration for Charles Henderson there. Dead ball. Unsportsmanlike on the defense. Half the distance to the goal results in a first down. And it will be first and goal. I think you call it exactly right, Mickey. That's you know, a bad time for a penalty like that. And, and uh, this is all Ramsey right now. So Aceford up to 42 carries now. <laughs> We're gonna let that clock run. First and goal at the six. Snap it with about four left. Here's Ashford. He is inside the five before his forward progress is stopped at about the three. You know, he's running with you know about the same speed and power that he did in the first quarter. I mean, he just keeps right on running. I bet you that's, uh, I bet you that's mom or auntie or grandma. It's one it, of them. It's someone pretty proud of number two. You better that's believe sure. it. I think all of Ramsey's going to be proud of number two after tonight. Yeah, he's put on quite a show. Second and goal from just inside the five. He got another touchdown in him. Let's see. They hand it to him. He does. It's a great block, and he's going to walk in untouched Boy, I tell for you the what, touchdown. I'll tell you what, there's a pancake in the play. I don't know who that was, but he knocked the Charles Henderson defend, defender out of the back of the end zone. I just believe that was block. QB Reese blocking there yeah. for Ramsey. It was number six. What a block. You and I saw the same thing. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it was uh, <laughs> it was a slobber knocker. And partner, I think that's gonna do it. We're gonna do it on the other side. Yeah. Like that. So here is William Murray back out to attempt the extra point. As Ramsey has built their largest lead of the game very late in the game. And the extra point is good. It is a 41 to 20 lead for Ramsey. We're back to Jordan Hare Stadium after this timeout. Hi, I'm Lionel Richie. And I have traveled all over the world, but I consider Tuskegee, Alabama as my home sweet. Media timeout on the field. I have such a pride in this state and I know that there's something I need to tell you that's of great importance. Vote. Register to vote and get your voter ID today. It really is easy. Easy like Sunday morning. Watching Alabama Public Television. Broaden your horizons.
It wouldn't be the holidays without working your hands a bit. That's how you create something worth remembering. Like those snowflake ornaments the kids done in grade school. Or those hand-breaded chicken sandwiches from Jack's. Got the all-new sweet hot honey with a kicked-up glaze. The always fresh fan-favorite cheesy bacon. And everyone loves the crispy southern fried classic. But would you look at that? Now that's a handmade masterpiece. Jack's. All about the South. Hey guys, I'm over here on the Charles Henderson sideline. And I don't know if you noticed, but coming out of right before the game, Juwan Boyd actually ran out with this jersey, number 10, draped over his chest. I did some asking around about it, and everybody told me this jersey belonged to Squirrel. So Squirrel was actually Demario Harris, a player for Charles Henderson who passed away on the football field about 10 years ago. It's a special jersey to the team. It stays draped over the bench throughout the whole game. They actually named their practice field after him this year. Wow, thanks a lot, Susan. Very, very touching story there. Yeah, you know, sometimes real life uh, becomes a part of, uh, of a football season, and it's nice that they have honored that young man and kept him with them for 10 years. And a lasting impact, number 10, at Charles Henderson. Department of Human Resources kickoff coming up now for William Murray. It is now a 21-point lead, 4.45 to go in the 5A state championship game. A line drive kick that is going to sail out of bounds and that'll draw the penalty flag. Well, 4.45 left in this, you're down by three scores. Now you're gonna have to open it up and you're gonna have to get some chunk plays. Here's an update on Ashton Ashford's night, Coach. He is tied a 5A state record with his five rushing touchdowns. Uh, and, and that, you know, we ought to mention that 281 yards to go with it. Now, I mean, it's it's uh, it's been quite a night, and if he gets back out there again, he might score another one and break the record. I told you when those earrings came off now, he was getting ready for business. He has been the story of this 5A state championship game, no doubt. And again, he has got great blocking, not just from his offensive line, but as we saw on that last touchdown, he got a great block from a receiver. Yeah, I mean, I mean, he's had, uh, you know, an insert bl uh, blocker that's been effective. Those wide receivers have blocked very unselfishly. And they're having a lot of fun on the Ramsey side of the field right now. Charles Henderson wanting a, a penalty for encroachment, didn't get it. Adams rolling out to his left. Squares and throws, and the pass is complete, but out of bounds to Khalil Carson. Yeah, you know, again, kind of a breakdown in, in the play early, and it tried to improvise, but just ran out of field. Kind of a half roll right here. You can see great upfield pressure that's going to force him back inside when that pursuit comes, and lots of white shirts at the end of that play. Nice hit by Caleb Patterson to top it off. Parker Adams now only three for nine passing in this game. And the play clock under five. Adams throws and it is complete at the 48 yard line on the reception that time. Stefan Mosley, now to move the chains. A little sit down right on the outside perimeter. The flat defender stayed inside and pretty soft coverage and took advantage of it for a nice completion. First down out at the 48. into the play clock. Gonna have to hurry and get the play off. They just do with one second. Adams under pressure and he's going to be sacked. That is the high ed sack. High ed transition students into careers. And that was a nice play there by the Ramsey defense to Marcus Wynn on the sack. Yeah, this is a half roll to the right. 
but a lot of the routes now are working back to the left and just really not a lot of places to throw and Ramsey makes him pay and you know, right up there by DeMarcus Wynn to pull that down. Had 11 sacks coming into this game and he just added to it. Second down and 18. Adams throws and it is too high looking for Mosley again on the near sideline and it's incomplete. Yeah, ran, ran that wheel and sat it down again which they had done a, a couple plays earlier but a nice drop by the uh, edge defender of that side. Fletcher Taylor made the ball have to be thrown over him and just too high and ran out of field again. And you see a little bit of frustration and a little dejection on, on the face of Parker Adams. It's been a frustrating night offensively. Got to find a way to pick up 20 yards here and two downs. Third down and 18. Ramsey rushes three. Adams has to step up in the pocket and takes off, and he's going to be taken down on a nice defensive play by Ramsey's Markwell Patterson. That'll bring up fourth down and ten. That's about as good a three-man rush as you can get right here to force the quarterback to pull it and run into, uh, you know, just nowhere to go with the ball with eight men dropping, but you got a little spy sitting in the middle as well. You'll give him that six yards to bring up this fourth down. And it's going to be a first down as they're going to call an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty against the Ramsey defense. Like on the defense, it's going to be enough for a first down. So after the penalty, it'll be first down at the 36-yard line for Charles Henderson. Another three-man rush. Adams' pass downfield is incomplete. Second and ten. Yeah, it looked like he tried to throw a corner out there, but there was no corner to throw to. So both the routes broke to the inside. You know, everything for Charles Henderson, with the exception of those two deep balls, it's just, just been a struggle. You know, there's very few clean plays tonight. Second and ten. They rush four. Adam steps up, but he's not going to be able to get away from the pressure. Again, a nice defensive play by... Ramsey's number 30, Cameron Carson, who's had himself a fine game tonight. Yeah, that, this is really a great job by him. You know, one of the things you teach pass rushers is you, when you get as deep as the quarterback, be ready to retrace. And that time Carson did a really, really great job of falling back inside and running that play down from behind. So it's third and ten. Again, Charles Henderson taking a lot of time to get the play in, down to Five seconds on the play clock. Adams steps up. And the pass is nearly intercepted. Getting a hand on it was James Jones. He's been very active in that secondary tonight. Again, closing inside out on that out cut. Just outran the ball to the, uh, to the receiver. You know, we talked a lot about uh, Jawan Boyd. You know, his night has been a little bit strange in the pass receiving department. Heck, he's got 98 yards receiving, which you think, boy, that's excellent, but it's just on two receptions. So here's here's the game for Charles Henderson, fourth and ten. Four man rush. Parker throws down the middle of the field, and it is incomplete. Again, a good job in the secondary. That time it was Jamarcus Jones getting a hand on it. And barring something pretty crazy right now, which is entirely possible in the Super 7, that's, uh, that's good night, Irene. So Ramsey will take over first and 10 at their own 36. And they can feel it now. You can see just very well covered. Those safeties have done such a good job for Ramsey tonight. Just, you know, have patrolled the middle of the field like champs. 
which is about what they're getting ready to become. And uh, as we said earlier, the Ramsey side is having a lot of fun. So the Ramsey offense comes back out onto the field, looking to just run the remaining 219 off the clock. Charles Henderson does have one timeout remaining, and number two is not in the game. So it looks like the night is done for Ashton Ashford. I don't know why. He's only had 44 carries. He should be <laughs> fresh. <laughs> there are guys that don't get 44 carries in a career. And so... Ramsey calls a timeout. Ronnie Jackson not happy about something, so he ran out right before the timeout play and the called field. the timeout. Ramsey. Now, the, the, the tailback that is back there is Tramel Washington, who has been kind of a jack of all trades. Big drop off there. He only averages 9.3 yards a carry. So that running game is still in great hands. There's nothing like winning. Man, that, those faces on the sideline, they, they say it all. That's why coaches coach and why players play. He's saying, come on, coach, you can smile now. You've talked about how stoic he has looked tonight. Yeah. You can see a little bit of a grin trying yeah, to he, break Yeah, he's out trying there. to stay stoic, but uh, <laughs> that, inner, that inner guy is not going to let him do it right there. First down, here's the give to Washington up the middle for a gain of a couple. And you saw the gentleman from the High School Athletic Association talking with coach, and that's one of the best conversations you can have. He's telling him what they're going to have to do when the game's over, how to line up. You don't mind having that conversation. Second down and eight. There are not many things in life better than standing on a sideline knowing that you have won a championship when you've really won every game that you can possibly win to get to the highest level. That's pretty, pretty special. They give it to Washington again up the middle. And his forward progress will be stopped at the 42, and that'll make it third down and three, and that clock keeps moving. It doesn't look like Charles Henderson is going to try to stop it. By the time they snap it again, we'll be under a minute. It's so much fun to look at these sidelines and, and winning situations. It's just all the hard work, you know, by everybody, players, coaches, but all the support people. You know, we saw the teachers come out early in the, uh, uh, you know, on the, uh, on the coin toss, parents. This doesn't happen just because of what happens on the field. It takes so many things to put all this together. And, and that run by Washington will seal it. It'll be a first down, a new set of downs for Ramsey, and now they can most likely get in the victory formation, Coach, which all coaches love. Well, I think the, I think the student body has already gotten in the victory formation up in the stands there. They're having a great time. They will be celebrating... Another state championship tonight for Ramsey. Again, they won the 6A state championship back in 2016, and they are just seconds away from the 5A state championship. Well, and they played really a great, a great football game, and they said they were gonna, gonna run downhill, and they have sure, sure done it. And there's a little emotion to this too now. You know, as hired as the interim coach, I think that title has been removed a long time ago, but winning a state championship is a very, very uh, high plateau that, you know, you know, it's not real crowded at the top. Not a lot of guys get to do that. Final snap of the game, and that'll do it. As the Ramsey Rams will be your 5A state championships. Coach Ronnie Jackson gets the Gatorade bath as his team has come into Jordan-Hare Stadium in Auburn and have knocked off Charles Henderson by a final score of 41-28. to 